This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I guess come in. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. I, I thought it was Bro, you're supposed to do the intro, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the intro if he's not sitting down. Yes, you could, bro. Oh, oh okay. My God. <laughs> right, let's just give to, give the floor to him. <laughs> Is this, he's like so confused. He's like, what? what's happening? So he's like, yo, people. there's a lot of light in here. Yeah. If you know y'all don't know, about? this yes. is Baby Z, aka Baby Vision, Homer Vision son. Yes. So, do you have any words to say, Zenith? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe he's standing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just woke up, so he's a uh, he's a little uh. A little so cute, so cute. <laughs> just want to, you know, extra surprise. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, for a lot of people, they don't even know that uh, Larry and Sebastian came to the baby. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is I was, true. I was just telling Gia that we were there. That is true. Yeah, Yo, you can hear my voice, right? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, bye, bye, bye. Nah, it's like weird, Marv, on this left headphone. Oh, let me let me close the door real quick. Larry wasn't ready. It's it's all Larry's fault. It's not Marv. Oh. It's, it's Larry's fault. It's Larry's fault. It's Larry's I always fault. I always like to <laughs> mess things up, you know. It's alright. All right. Uh. Or move a little bit <laughs> to the right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bro, do the intro. Yo, he's super close to you. He's basically on your neck. Oh my god. Yeah, right. be close like that. A little bit more. A little um, bit more. Yeah. Alright, All right, there you go. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Hello, 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 everybody. <laughs> Welcome to that One Piece talk. My name is Larry. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Part vision. <laughs> and this is that One Piece talk. Where we talk One Piece. Woo! Oh. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Gia. I'm gonna just have you speak a little closer. Thank you. As you guys can see, we have some special guests on this episode, episode 97. Uh, we have Gia and Parvision. So to start it off, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm gonna do introductions. <laughs> so when it comes to the cosplay world, uh, Gia pretty much has it in a chokehold. On her TikTok, she has amassed over 400K in followers thanks to her 70 plus cosplays, which I had to ask her how much she actually had. <laughs> uh, you'll never find a dull moment while viewing her page. She's truly an artist, but that's not all she does. As of recent, she started her own YouTube and has surpassed over 10,000 in subscribers. Her first video ever, which is titled, One Piece Changed My Life, has accumulated almost 200,000 views. Not to mention, she has 16,000 followers on Twitter. Please, everyone, give a warm welcome and throw a bunch of W's in the chat <laughs> for Gia's success so far. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Do you want to tell everybody I think about you? I kind of covered it all. Yeah? When you asked me how many cosplays I've done, I just round it up I, I it honestly might even be like in the hundreds by now oh my god but i i didn't i don't know i don't know i, I got guessed. three and they already take up too much room <laughs> <laughs> wait it's buggy it's buggy Usopp, and uh i gotta i, I think no no just two just, just two. two yeah and they already take it, it seems like it's a, yeah I'm, I'm almost soon. yeah I'm yeah it wasn't Usopp. It was Sogi King. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was Sogi King. Come on. I'm trying to get you to do the going merry. (laughs) (laughs) He's got the head for it. Yeah, exactly. You guys are so annoying. We just had a mask to it. You guys are annoying. Wait, has Gia seen you without your... No, I'm kidding. Yeah, she has. (laughs) There's like a million videos on TikTok. (laughs) All right, anyway, uh, here's Par. (laughs) That's the intro. That's the intro. (laughs) It's so funny because... We, I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. I'm joking. I mean, that could have been fine. Oh, we, we, 
Uh, a lot of people don't know that I've been on the uh, pod for like four episodes last year, yeah. and we recently rewatched that first episode, and <laughs> it brought me to tears. The the <laughs> intro you gave me then, I'm like, yo, it's so crazy how far we came, you know, since then. It is a minute. Yeah, and yeah, also that being like the very beginning of like our channels, basically too. So it's like it was. Yeah, so it's like it was in its infancy, but like. It's the quality was still there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so cool. Like, people yeah. should go rewatch those old episodes. They're pretty. They comical. are funny. Yeah, they're they pretty still great. hold up. Yeah. So uh, he's been on here so many times. We're starting to lose count, but he obviously <laughs> counted. Uh, but that doesn't take away from the fact that every time he does make it here, it's a blessing. He recently passed 30k in subs on YouTube. Uh, had a beautiful son, which we got to just meet, and he's had one of his shorts reach over a million views, hey. which is astronomical. Um, please welcome once again the Shadow Elemental Hockey, Rocks is Buggy, Shanks is a child trafficking pirate, <laughs> and Mihawk is a sword himself, Mr. One Piece Madness, aka Far Vision. Welcome oh, back, brother. Man. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. We're now home. Real quick, which one of those do you believe the most, though? Right now? <laughs> Just elemental hockey. Just the element. Oh, yeah, I got you, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you no. on the the rocks is a buggy. Yeah, yeah. rocks is not buggy. It, it, could it, it could be. Could be. It could be. It, it, the option is there. The world is there. Let me ask Gia, since she doesn't know about <laughs> it. Gia, do you think rocks I mean, might have... be buggy? I've never heard this theory, and, it, and as of right now, it makes no sense. Yeah, and thank you. <laughs> no, I'm so you said, said she said You that. said rocks is buggy. What, what I'm saying, the, the video was that everything we know about God Valley and rocks uh -huh. is from Sengoku and the Marines. And he was reading off the newspaper, which the newspaper is also biased, which we see like an egghead, right? Like yeah. they'll say like Straw Hat Luffy's taking Vegapunk hostage. Mm -hmm. Clearly wrong, right? Mm. So if that's our source of material from one chapter about rocks, then everything that we know about it might not be what really happened. And so it could be that like rocks, for example, right? In this moment, it sounds weird. It's like there was Whitebeard, there was Shiki, there was Big Mom. But then again, we look at Buggy. He has a similar structure under him where it's, he has the world's strongest swordsman. He has the crocodile. And these characters, yeah, like obviously we know the context of why they're there. But we don't know the context of rocks at all. Mm -hmm. Any part of the crew. We, so it could easily be we, a, we do. Similar, a similar <laughs> situation. We, we do. Do we know the context yet? Yeah. Yeah. That Mihawk and Crocodile aren't conquered. Oh, mm. you know that hurts some other people. I'm, I'm not gonna put my hand on Mihawk. Listen, bro, I get blasted anyway, so it's okay. Let me just tell you guys: if if Larry's counter to my theory is Mihawk not being conquered, I don't know. I don't know which side you guys are choosing. Uh, I mean, I just don't know where Buggy, like, where you connect that. It, it's not the. It, he's saying Rocks is Buggy. I was saying Rocks is like a Buggy-like character, meaning like. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. so confused. Oh, my bad, like, my, bad, my, bad, no my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. This is how you be twisting my <laughs> words. Come on. <laughs> Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. I honestly kind of see that. I can see that. Oh, my God. Sorry. Talk to him, Gia. Oh God. She Talk to him. She didn't see the I'm video so yet. can't even see the video. That's after I watch, I'll watch the video after. And I'll let you know Appreciate how Appreciate it. Uh, you don't have to. You don't anyway, have to. <laughs> Chorus Par would defend himself for 20 minutes. <laughs> what do you mean 20 minutes? It's been before. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, before we start the chapter, guys, I did want to let everybody that's new viewers to our channel that come from Par and comes from Gia's fans, um, listen, I don't care what happens, we are not tolerating any type of disrespect to our hosts at all. So if you're in a live chat, please listen up. Uh, we are not giving any chances at all to any of you guys. If you say something uh, that's not respectful or you don't say anything that's not kind and you know somewhat generous, uh, the mods have free will to ban you at any moment without asking us for permission. So if you're going to say something weird and you feel like it's going to be weird, then it's most likely weird, right? So for our sakes and for yours and for you to enjoy all media that comes out from us and them, just don't do it. It's just not worth it. So thank you for being here that, you know, you, the fans of Gia and Parvision have come here. Thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, it's truly an honor. 
uh, to have these guests in our presence as well. So please just be kind. Our whole community is based on respect, you know, uh, friendship, and also just like positive culture. And if you don't represent that with us, then you know you just gotta bounce, yo. Because we're gonna get more subscribers no matter what. <laughs> uh, so thank you. But other than that, Seb, say what's up to everybody in the chat, and then we'll read some super chats. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of people in the chat today. Awesome. I think we have over 300 people here right now. That's amazing. Uh, but shout out to Strahd, Toby, Bubba Wavy, Goku224, uh, Joy Boy Mark, Caleb, Vintage, Tainted Marth, Iceball, JT, Twilight Straw Hat, UK Simon, uh, so many of uh, y'all, Peanut Butter and Wavers, so many of y'all in here, man. <laughs> so funny names. Ronnie Williams, uh, Pig, D Mahome. Red hair shanked them. Shane Burns, Winston, uh, just so many, too many, too many names to read. Honestly, right now, shout out to Kev the OG. I see he's in the chat as well. Yeah, uh, it's just too many names to read right now. To be honest. With yeah, you. yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, before we get into the actual chapter, guys, we're just gonna read some super chats. Uh, yeah, we've had a couple sitting for a while. Um, one <laughs> really dear to my heart is from my guy Nerd Taku. Uh, he says, "You know, when I took TOPT figuratively to the highest point in the world." I knew it was just a precursor to you guys elevating it even past those heights. This 30 is for the 30K you will be hitting by the end of the week. Hashtag bet on T-O-P-T. Uh, and then another one from him that says, Do you believe Oda is setting up the Straw Hats to fail, similar to Kid and Law, to show us that they aren't where they need to be? Can't wait to catch a live stream. Uh, this seven-hour difference sucks. Also... Hashtag Taku and Tanuki for T.O.P.T. I believe that's a shout out to Chestnut. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what do you think, Gia? You think that the not strong... at all? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not even close. No, they're they're like just on a straight upwards. I don't think you can compare the Straw Hats even close to um, Kid and the Heart Pirates. Like, they, it just does not compare. Doesn't yeah. Come close. Go ahead, opinion. bro. Oh, I'm. I just go ahead. <laughs> what do you mean? Why are you so hostile for his part? Yeah, he yeah, was bro. smiling. <laughs> he was smiling uh, at just, me. It's just funny because I know your response to it. I feel like it's interesting because people want the straw hats to fail for some reason. And mm. I feel like, you know, we obviously it's not going to be a fun story if they keep on winning. But yeah. I feel like the nuance of winning doesn't have to mean losing outright. Like, people want a Saba Odi loss. People want, like, the same thing that happened to the Heart Pirates, that thing that happened to the Kid Pirates. But, like, Luffy can lose and it doesn't mean that he loses a battle and I think that's like where the story is going to go where it's like Luffy could be this all powerful person but if it's like his friends aren't up there if he doesn't have the right protections in place if he doesn't have the world in place around it then all that power doesn't mean anything so I think that's like Luffy might not win in Egghead and I can easily see that but I don't think it's like they get eradicated I think it's just like they see something and then they realize like yo we need to like practice more we need to train more we need to um reassess like hey maybe we do need that grand fleet you know like because they just left the grand fleet's like yeah we don't really need you guys you know mm. but um it might come to us oh comes closer to mike all right cool no one's ever told me i need to be louder but uh, <laughs> oh. sorry. <laughs> sorry um but yeah, so I, I don't think that the Straw Hats will lose here, but that doesn't mean that there won't be something as an obstacle, and there has to be to make the rest of the story interesting for the last saga. Yeah. Uh, Seb, you want to comment? Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, similar to what Par was saying, uh, just the way Oda writes arcs, there's going to be some sort of downspin, and we've been getting a little bit of that, but there should be some real stakes. There should be some pressure on Luffy and the Straw Hats by the end of this arc. Will they lose? No. I don't think they're going to lose. I don't think we're setting up that time of story. It's not Sabodi 2.0 or anything like that for the Straw Hats right now. But it just shows that they're in a different level of their journey than Law or Kid are. Mm. It's just how it is. Like, they are the crew. They are the future Pirate Kings crew. They'll deal with a similar level threat that Law and Kid had to deal with, but they'll overcome it. Mostly because Luffy, unlike them, has a real crew. So yeah. that's how I look at it. Damn, a real crew. That's bro, it's true. He, he and okay. Wire gave it up, bro. That, that's in fair. two seconds. Ship got dunned up in two seconds. Yeah. True. Yeah. I think that a lot of people just think that Luffy and crew are like, 
the same type of bums that Kid and Law is. Damn, Law, Law getting wow. raised out too? Well, 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 Wait. well when, I, when I come at Law, I don't come at Law in the same degree as like Kid, right? Like, I think Law is a one-man army. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, I think that he's not a bum. I think that yeah. his crew is a bum. Like, Beppo isn't like Zoro level, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're not dependable to that degree as such as like Jinbei is at the helm, so he knows how to work the waters mm-hmm. and escape and call on other fishermen and call shark wells. Like, there's so much more to their crew than there is to like somebody like Beppo yeah. that recently just got the spotlight, which we'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. But it's like, they also don't realize like, Luffy will be hard to contend with and put into that position once again that he was at at Sabaody because he was defenseless. Mm -hmm. He he couldn't protect his crew where now he's banging out with Kaido one-on-one in base form and he's able to now dish out damage capable of dealing with anybody. So you have to be like the top in the universe to actually put him in a position of can I not do anything anymore? Mm -hmm. And there's nobody in that position except like people like Shanks. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at Kid, you look at Law, they're, they're kind of one-man armies, and they had to fight a Yonko together in order to just ring her out. It's really hard to, you know, compare Luffy and the rest of crew to these other two crews. It's just not going to happen. Like, if Luffy goes to Winter Island and fights Blackbeard, Luffy just dominates Blackbeard. If he goes, yeah, if he goes to Shanks, he's, he's most likely going to lose to Shanks. Now, the difference is, you know, that's that's for the end of the story, right? So he'd never fight Shanks. But if Law went to fight Shanks, like if Law went there, he wouldn't have gotten decimated like Kid did. Why? Because he's stronger, one. And two, he's not recklessly attacking civilians to the point Shanks is going to kind of like try to take him out for good. That's just not in Law's character. Yeah. So when people take the story for what it is, they usually think like, yo, all three of them are three billion berries, Equally. And it's like, no, that's not true. Like, we know Luffy should be, like, 2 billion plus more, probably, right? Like, 1 billion plus more, just because of who he is and what his crew has to their name and to their abilities. So, I I don't know, man. People just be weird, bro. (laughs) They just want things like that to happen. Yeah. it's. I think it's so... One of Law's crew specifically, it's like, there were so many times where you could have shown off that they were all, like, adept at water stuff. Right? Yeah. Like, we're in a show where it's, like, all water, and you couldn't show them, like, swimming or doing with the squirtle bubble beam that, what Shachi <laughs> did, right? It's like, at any point at Saba Odi, that probably would have been useful, right? Like, but we didn't see any of that up until now. And I'm like, I, I get it. They're side characters. I get it. But it's like, what an interesting reveal. Because I still remember in Onigashima where it's like, in the anime, they show it that the Law's crew had to ram his ship into Luffy to save him underwater. I'm like, wait, they can (laughs) swim? (laughs) What do you mean? You know? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Oda didn't uh, come up with that one yet. But but their names are like (laughs) Penguin and Killer Whale. Like, that's what they mean. Like, (laughs) he clearly knew what he was doing. And apparently being in the North Blue, like, they're talking about it in this chapter. Like, oh, we survived the frigid North. I was like, (laughs) bro, is this the thing the entire time that they're going to be, like, Aquaman? Like, it's so crazy. Oda just needed somebody to save Law somehow. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to it, but <laughs> let's get a couple more super chat, and then we're we'll going to chat. Yeah, we have a decent amount in. So uh, yeah. we got five dollars from No Pain. It says, "Can't wait for my father, Travel Guard D Water Law, to spin back on Blackbeard and his fodder crew." Love y'all content. Always remember Beppo Solo. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely uh, one of the bigger chapters for Beppo. We'll get into that later. But thank you so much, No Pain. We'll do two more, and then we'll get into the chapter, okay? All right. Sorry, guys. It's just that, you know, three hours. I I, I want, like, time with the guests. So sorry about that. All right. We got another uh, $10 from uh, Flame C. It says, let's go. Let's get them likes up. Yes, if you haven't already, please like the stream. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, Flame C. Yes, thank you, guys. All right. And then last one uh, for now. It is $5. Five. Pounds from Mr. PK. It says, Theory, I've been thinking about man marked by fire is Robin's father. He has ties to Olivia, Saul, Marines, carries on O'Hara's will, and protects the last pony glyph. So dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so dragon. Um, I don't know. I kind of like that, though. I mean, I don't know if I would like it per se, but... Listen, all his screams is dragon is still a bad dad to not only one person, but the two. <laughs> you swear Robin is dragon's father. It's not. Yo, it could be. <laughs> it could be. It, it Wait, could be. you think... Dragon is Robin's dad? Yeah. 
Like, okay. there's a possibility. <laughs> it's a possibility. It's, it's okay to say Larry's like wrong. Like you, you can I think say you're that. incorrect. Like different <laughs> moms, different moms well, is what that theory is saying. Yeah, yeah. Robin and Luffy have different moms, but the same dad. So, so basically, like the theory is like Robin at the age that she was. Mm -hmm. What what is she like? She's 35 now, right, or something like that. I'm not kidding. I'm not law. I'm not Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence out here, like, Lionel, he, Lionel, 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 oh, Lionel. Lionel's probably right. in the chat right so, now, like, yes, <laughs> 35. So basically, the age that she was, mm -hmm. was, uh, she was, like, born around the same time that Olivia, her mom, was out there in the seas, uh, traveling around uh, with other, you know, archaeologists, and then they were rebelling against the government, basically. Mm -hmm. So Dragon at that time was like on the uprise, mm -hmm. and Robin doesn't have white hair. That's true. She has black hair. I like how it, it's it's just it's not enough, bro. <laughs> you saved that no. for a punchline. It's not line. enough, bro. The hair, yeah. bro. I swear, if I ever use hair <laughs> as part of my theory, you throw me out. Right. That's like, just crazy. Bro, also, crazy bro. That? Hold on, hold on. But also, Dragon asked about her. When they had the two-year time skip. Well, I think a lot of people want to know about Robin. Right. I Yo, don't know. I want to know about Robin, bro. Listen, bro, I know. But <laughs> she is great. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's up there. Yeah, you reach him, bro. It's no, but there, there is more to the theory. There I'm is more. I just don't know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm forgetting it. I just don't know It's not my favorite one. There's various versions, though, like rocks being connected to it. Blackbeard is another one. A lot of people think Blackbeard is from O'Hara for a lot of but reasons. But what do we gain from Robin being Luffy's stepsister? Like, what do we gain I mean, as people, a reader, as People a like the uh, the relationship that they have where it's like Luffy just says something dumb, and then she like is like, ah, oh, I know what he's talking about. Like the pineapple, and then she knows it's Marco, right? Mm. Like, yeah. It's I, like, that's like sibling but energy. But Robin, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> linger too long on this one. Robin's whole storyline is like you're going to find friends out there in the in yeah. the world. And she how is her finding her long lost brother? But like, how is that? Yo, are narrative? your siblings not your friends? Bro, to some degree? there's a difference. Okay, the whole time it was just her brother. You'd call Larry a brother, right? I would, but that's because that's my bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not because deep down somewhere in the lineage we related. Or, or even directly in this case. Imagine, though. Oh, I just think it would be a little hollow. Maybe we personally. do 23 and me, but uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Wait, before... Actually, nah, no. No. <laughs> oh, I, I just, before we... There was one other super chat, which is just, like, insane to me. Uh, $100 from Killer Comedy TV said hello. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> yeah, do, the are there any other ones like that? There's a hundred, there's a, a 20, uh, but yeah. No, but this one, right, so do this 100 for sure. Hidden Island sends his love. That's the super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Killer Comedy on behalf of Hidden Island. <laughs> on which is behalf of like Hidden? Wild. Yo, can we just text Hidden and be like, yo, <laughs> what's going on? in the chat. Oh, is he? Yeah. Hidden also, is oh, he is cracked. What kind of gang is he <laughs> yeah, running right now? Sorry. Thank you uh, so much, Killer Comedy TV. Yes, thank I'll you for the hundred dollars. Oh, the Hidden hours. Island. Shout out to Hidden Island. If y'all haven't already, he is a common frequenter of this podcast. He makes amazing content. Yeah, Definitely follow the Hidden Island on YouTube and yes. whatever else he's doing. Thank out you there. for the super donation. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Anytime you get that. All right. Anyway, let's continue on. You guys, ready? Ready. Yes. All right, so we have no cover story this chapter. Uh, instead, we have some of the Straw Hats sleeping while chipmunks are either imitating their straw hat or in bubbles eating chestnuts. Um, what did you like about this color spread, and is there anything you noticed? And we'll start with Seb. Uh, not much. I thought it was dope. I loved seeing the color spreads col color spreads with uh, all the straw hats on them, just kind of relaxing. I did notice that there's no uh, Nami Robin we're not here, so it's just the guys. Um, and Sanju was reading the cooking book. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, nothing too major. I was trying to see a lot of times, like, they'll have the animals that are interacting with them mm -hmm. be versions of the Straw Hats. I was looking for that when I was reading this one, but I didn't see that. Or at least I didn't notice it. Um, but, yeah. Not much. All right. Uh, how about you, Gia? What did you like about this um, color spread? I noticed that Sanju is reading something really interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exactly say cooking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no yeah, way. Yeah, I didn't notice that. No, no shot. There's what? no shot you didn't notice. I that. did not notice that. 
that? Are you serious? Yeah, what are we doing? Yeah, um, I don't know exactly what he's reading, but I'm interested. Here's Sebastian, tell us what he's reading. Oh my gosh, it says cocky. Okay, cool. I can't. I, <laughs> I'd like to know what is inside the book. Otherwise, um, <laughs> it's just really cute. That's all. Besides that, that kind of distracted me. But he's it's the only adorable. one awake. Yeah. Oh man, the only one awake <laughs> reading a book. You know, it's the thing. It's like I looked at that, oh, and I'm man. like, okay, maybe, maybe the scans because we read the, you know, the the fan scans. I was like, oh, maybe they scuffed it up. But this isn't fan scans. This is legit. Like this is their coloring. So Oda like didn't draw in the full circle there and it spelled and this makes you if this chapter and the last chapter didn't make you think that oda's on twitter or he knows like one piece jargon this should tell you that literally is coc king which means he's implying that he's gonna get conquerors see that's point. where you went with it that's, <laughs> that's where everybody went with it that's where everybody that's not, went with it that's not where i went with it you're no. just apparently <laughs> sleeping like the rest of them <laughs> Listen, bro. Listen, bro. I went two ways with this. Oh, I went three. I don't want to know all three. Just hit me with the one that you know is right. Yo, oh, so when man. I first read it, I thought it said cucking. Oh, <laughs> my good. Yeah, good thing the twins aren't on this street, bro. So I was oh, like, yo, God. so he's reading a book about cucking? Makes sense. It's Sanji, right? And then it was, the second one was the cock king. So yeah. I was like, okay, so this is going way past what I thought it was. <laughs> and it's a it's a he's the only one awake. What's in that you know, what's in, you know, the pages? Like does he have a other book that's <laughs> under it, you know? Look at his face too. <laughs> yeah, Smiling. he's like smart. <laughs> and then the chipmunk is right next to him, right? Mm -hmm. Um and then the third version was obviously he's the only one awake. Uh the color of the conqueror means C O C which is, you know, conquerors. Uh and then Sanji most likely getting it with a foreshadow. To me I think that if Sanji gets Conqueror's hockey, it would feel very much how Luchi awakened his devil fruit out of nowhere. I don't think that there's enough to give Sanji at this point to say that he would have Conqueror's hockey. And I know <clears throat> you're going to have a rebuttal, of course. Uh, I don't have a rebuttal. But I will say this. If Jinbei doesn't have it mm -hmm. and Sanji does, there's an inconsistency inside the story of One Piece. I think that if anybody was to get it, it would be Jinbei. And if Jinbei does have it, then let Sanji have it. Like, I don't care. But I think out of anybody, if a person could look a Yonko in the face and she goes, life or treat, and he just looks at her and goes, yo, I'm leaving the crew with no fear. That screams Conqueror's Hockey to me. And mm -hmm. he's willing to punch Big Mom and do whatever he has to do in order to save his Nakama as well. It's like, I get Sanji to a point should have it, but I wouldn't be disappointed if he didn't have it. But with Jinbei, he needs to have it. No, yeah, I agree. So my rebuttal is, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I have an hour and 30 minute video <laughs> on Sanji oh my God. that explains how he already demonstrated Conqueror's Hockey. And what's funny is it's actually through cooking. It's actually like the, the storyline fits where it's through that. So for yeah. Oda to create this... <laughs> The pun that I didn't even do despite being there is kind of crazy. But your point of like, you know, if Jinbei had it, well, that's something I've said from the very beginning. And the thing is that same plot line, that same logic line that I use for that is what led me to with Kobe. And even now in recent chapters, you yourself had admitted that like, hey, Kobe could probably have conquers, whether he's already shown it. I in a previous episode, I think it was like, what, 41, I think, we, we went back and forth on the Kobe thing. Mm. Um, where it's like at Marineford, he did like a parallel of what Luffy did. He stopped everybody at the war, something that nobody else could do the entire time. Mm. And we've seen many wars and nobody being able to stop it like that. Who, and so, What do you mean? When he, when he stopped what? He didn't stop anything. Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. We're not going to go back for it because then you have to reclip. You can repost that now. Okay. Yeah, but anyway. But like the point being is like I agree with the, the Jinbei thing. The... Uh, uh, I've said this before where I said, like, honestly, I can make a point for every single straw hat to have conquerors. And the thing is, the question is, will Oda do it? The only one that I was having trouble with was honestly Jinbei. And what I said then was Oda would just have to give it to Jinbei because at this age for him to not have it. And my biggest gripe is, like, why has no Fishman had conquerors at all? But the point Fish I think. Fish and Tiger had it. I hope, right? Oh. I wish that was somehow shown. But the, the I think what's uh, more important here is. 
a lot of people go back to the who's who fight and there's like the black lightning and in the anime they're fo- they they gave him the conquers hockey like effects everything about it conquers hockey with jimbei and i think the reason why he might get it in the current timeline now is because when you look at like uh jimbei he's more reserved he never really enacts his own uh sense of will but then when you look at the who's who fight that was the one time where he like someone pushed his buttons and he was like no like i'm not letting this disrespect slide so that's when he pulled out the conquerors all the other times fishman and jimbei just sit back and take the the brunt of disrespect even when it comes to big mom right but the big mom moment that you pointed out was like i'm gonna respect myself here i'm going to side with the person i believe in i'm not going to just side with you for this false sense of protection right so he's not just taking an l for the sake of somebody else he's doing something for himself and that's ultimately what i think conquers is about right like it's about somebody enforcing their will on other people and if you're not doing that then you probably won't get it but if you start doing that even later in your life you probably will emanate it and that's probably where jimbei would come out and i think sanji Hopefully, we'll be able to do that too. I think in previous, there's a specific arc. If you guys go watch that video that explains it, it's pretty. It's pretty concrete. But very well said, Far. Very well said. No. <laughs> <laughs> he just thinks that by instilling his will is by putting whatever he feels into his food and changing a person's, you know, mood. Uh, is uh, hey. somebody instilling their hey, will hey, onto hey. somebody else? That how, doesn't how work. How many people bro. can change Big Mom's mood? How many people can knock her out with Any, his food? Anybody, that, anybody, has the food anybody that looks like cake. Really? Yeah. Oh, because Strawson's cake doesn't taste that good. Well, the kids that she ate tasted good, so. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't knock her out either. Yo. I mean, oh, technically. Man. Nisemla didn't even knock her out, right? Listen, bro. It's, it's not just her either. It wasn't it's just her. Bitch. Oh, it so, was, put, was, so, put in, so put in has converse Listen, too. I'm not talking only about Saraji as much as the next guy, but we gotta move on. All right, my bad. <laughs> All right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, next. Uh, the title of this chapter is called 10th Ship Captain of the Black Bear Pirates Kuzan. Chapter left off where the last one did, right? Garp using Galaxy Impact and decimating a part of Pirate Island. The ship is jump, uh, The ship he jumped off while it was midair was stopped by Prince uh, Gruss, Gruss's Devil Fruit ability. Everyone caught in the damage are out cold. Garp says out loud that due to his old age, he lost his edge. Kobe yells out to Garp, and Habari goes to Kobe's aid. Gruss says out loud that he doesn't accept Garp saying Kobe's the future of the Marines, and he's going to sabotage him. Kobe says that he can't believe it's more than just one, uh, just more than sword members that came to his rescue. As Kobe continues towards Garp, we see her body uh, get turned to ice. Everyone is shocked. Then we hear Garp say Kuzan Aokiji's name. Um, oh, Kobe tells him to unfreeze Habari right now. Aokiji then states he can't have Kobe escaping when Blackbeard isn't around. So, what are your thoughts so far on that part of the chapter? We'll go par. Yeah, this is. I've talked a lot about this already. It's so it's so interesting because I think one thing that I did note. Um, there's like. Obviously, with the rest of the chapter in context and the last chapter in context, one of the biggest questions is, like, where is Kuzan on the spectrum of, of like, pirate, navy, justice, evil, all that stuff? And there's so many interesting notes, like, for example, he froze Hibari, but not Kobe. Or, he like, when, you know, just a page later, we see him freeze all of Blackbeard's crew, but somehow, for some reason, he leaves a few people up. And it makes you wonder based off of what happens later, like, why didn't Kuzan just let loose? Why didn't he just freeze everybody, right? If, like, if he froze the entire island, for example, the only person who, um, the only person who would be, be able to break out, in my opinion, would probably be Garp. And then, if you go a page later, that same handicap that he put on Blackbeard about, like, hey, I froze your entire crew. You can't act up with the Gura Gura now. Why are you going so far ahead, bro? Wait, that's, isn't that just one page? It's one page later. It's, uh, it's, oh. You got to stay within the confines. You got to stay within the confines, confines bro. Okay, okay. So if he, okay, okay, if he froze everybody, right, <laughs> then then Garp wouldn't have an, it, legs to stand on, is what I, what, you know, yeah. keeping up here. And then it's, it's interesting because another note that I feel like is important is Garp isn't surprised. Um, from my perspective. Like, uh, when Kobe, he's like, what? Kuzan? But Garp is just 
Kuzan, you gotta unfreeze it. And you look at his face, it's not like a surprised face. It's kind of like a, a face of disbelief almost. Like to me, it kind of sounds like he knew about this rumor. And mm -hmm. we know that this existed because Doflamingo back at Punk Hazard asked Kuzan, he said like, I've heard crazy rumors about you. What are you Kuzan? And then, you know, Kuzan had his whole like dialogue about where he is on what side of things. And even Doflamingo, as crazy as he was, he was like, yo, the stuff about you is wild. What I've heard in the grapevine. And now it feels like Garp has heard that and he knew about it. He understood that Kuzan could have been here this entire time. And he's kind of just accepting it. And he's in disbelief that he's his protege is actually in front of him freezing up his squad you know what i mean so like there it's so minor what oda inserted here but it's like yeah why didn't kuzan just freeze everybody I, i'm still wondering why um you know with the whole chapter in context why that's not the case but it one another thing that's kind of interesting is uh it seems like blackbeard's crew really likes kuzan so i was like dang like he, he gets a lot of love wherever he goes so it's yeah. pretty interesting all right what about you gia what did you think about this so um, far? It was very confusing for me because this whole time I thought that Aokiji for sure was a part of S.W.O.R.D. Mm -hmm. And now this is the first time where I'm really questioning, is he or is did he actually turn into like a bad guy? Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to be the case, but I'm not sure after this. But it, it was really cool to see how powerful Garp was and for him to be not happy with his attack, even though it was actually insane. Mm -hmm. So that was funny to see. It reminded me of like, I don't know. It was just, it was just nice to see, but now I'm just confused overall. Just don't know his, where he is. Yeah. I don't, I want to know what his reasoning behind everything is. There has to be something. Yeah. Because I always thought he wasn't a bad guy, but now I, I don't know. He might be. Yeah. I still don't think he's a bad guy, but Thank I don't you. want him to be. Yeah. But. I don't think anybody does, to be honest. Mm. Especially after a kind of right? Mm. Um, so. Mm. Um, well, so the start of the chapter was really dope. Um, I love seeing Garp in his glory. Mm. Even Red mentioning, like, yo, I'm losing my edge after he just did what he did. I did want to highlight that I had scoped every single person on the ground there, and I didn't see any foam. So, like, I, while I do believe Garp is a conqueror, and I think that the attack he used was coded with conqueror's hockey... I don't see the foam here. So, I don't know. Again, we've always talked about Garp being the exception to the rule. If he wasn't a conqueror, I still want him to be. I was just looking for some foam out of some mouths, and I didn't see that. Um, in regards to... Pause. <laughs> what an interesting way to look at the listen, man. scene. Listen, uh, in regards to Prince Gruss, or Gruss, whatever you say his, has, say his name, being Kobe's number one hater, I thought that was hilarious. Like, he straight up outwardly was just hating on Kobe. Yeah, he was hating. Like, you don't see that kind of hate just outwardly like that. I thought that was dope. Listen, man, if you ain't got haters, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> What's funny is the fan scans weren't this aggressive yeah. with the work, because then the Viz came and was like, I'm going to sabotage him. Yeah, I was like, bro. whoa. Like, <laughs> like, it was like, oh, I can't let him get ahead of me. He's like, nah, I'm sabotaging this man. I thought that was funny. Um, and then Habari getting frozen hurt my heart, because I like Habari. I think she's cute. I think she's dope. And then the face Garp made when he saw Aokiji. I was like, let's go. Because I don't know if you remember this, and I was looking for it all weekend. Me and Lionel got into a huge debate about Garp and Kuzan and whether they would actually fight, right? And I was like, yes, I could totally even see him killing Garp. And he was, he was so, he was doing a whole temper tantrum about it. So as you know, agenda peace always reigns supreme for me. <laughs> so while I won't skip ahead too far, it might not be looking great, for my agenda right there, but frozen garb theory. Yeah. Frozen garb. Yeah, That's I, all like I'm that. I like that. I like that. I'm saying. Theory. But I'll pass it back to you, Larry. I don't have much. Yeah, I mean, I think Garp used Geppo to get down faster than the ship could land, which was interesting to see. Um, I think just seeing Tashigi like trying to hold on for dear life <laughs> because they thought that the ship was gonna crash into the ground was really cool. And I think that having Garp have his moment where like he's in the middle of everybody and there's like smoke everywhere and he's in front of his ship with the dog with the bone in its mouth and like all the people are like, you know, laid out in front of him was just like super cool to me. I just loved seeing Garp actually look like what we always thought he was going to be in the story. He was going to be related to Dragon and Luffy and Luffy is supposed to dictate how his, you know, 
former fathers were supposed to be in their you know their heyday and he's like still a badass to that degree um this is the second time that oda has told us that age does matter in one piece when it in terms of like fighting and stuff like that and i think a lot of people use that in debates when arguing about like can these old heads still keep up like do they still have the strength that they did when they were in their prime and just this is the second time he's stated like this is not what I said it was before. Like, I obviously was lying because Oda lies all the time. <laughs> and then uh, we saw it with Rayleigh. Rayleigh even said it about Blackbeard when they were on um, Snake Island, Lily, uh, Amazon Lily. He was like, yo, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to beat Blackbeard because of my age right now. So just seeing that that consistency is, you know, proven is amazing. Um, I'm a huge fan of Havarti. I think, like, her chasing after Kobe and, like, making sure he's okay adds another element to like kobe himself like not only does he have fans and he has people who truly admire him as a true hero he also has like his own little fangirls where they're like yo i love this guy not because of what how scary he is or like the position that he holds in the marines but i actually love him because of the choices he's made in life and also because he he gives us hope as a marine there's so much corruption in the marines in the navy it, you know the celestial dragons are not that far above us they tell us what to do and it's always evil right like we know what's going on but like he's a prime example of what we should be as marines and like just seeing like her body is like adding to that flavor it made her getting frozen so much more impactful because when she did get frozen kobe immediately like went into like not rage mode but he went into like you know unfreeze her like i need her to be unfrozen like uh, to some degree i'm like yo he might go after aokiji if he doesn't do it and i would like to see where kobe lands in that position yeah yeah so that was interesting but you know gart being upset it reminds me of uh one piece film z mm. when we had zephyr see aokiji he was in his clothes that you know he was in when he was traveling that was canon even though the movie's not canon it just brought to the forefront that Z ended up training Kazaru, Akainu, and Aokiji. And then you remember when they shared that bottle on the cliff uh, mm -hmm. right before you know Z went and died? And then Aokiji actually put the ice wall up so he could have his moment and then left. I was like, that's sort of like us reliving that moment now. And like you brought mm -hmm. it up before that the movies always foreshadow what's going to happen in yeah. One Piece. This is happening right now. Yeah. So I was like a shout out to Par. Damn, man. Yes. Z, Z ain't make it through that movie, right? Yeah, he did. I mean, hey. I, I hope it doesn't happen. I'm just saying. I need Garb to be alive. I'm just saying. Garb isn't making it, but you don't need to slander him on the way by I'm looking at slandering. foam in the middle of his panel. <laughs> Where the foam at, at Par? Look at what Larry was focusing on. Why do you have to look at downed people's mouths like Where? that? Huh? Where the foam at? <laughs> no, but I like, like, like I, I love that so many people are liking the Hibari thing because the moment that she was introduced, I, like, my brain... Her design is, like, is so cool. Yeah, and, and, like, the positioning that Oda put her in is, I could, like, instantly in the live reaction, I just painted out this, like, scene, and I hope, I pray Hibari makes it to see, like, Luffy. Like, I have this, like, ominous feeling, like, given her importance that she might go as, like, a side character, and that might be rough for Kobe in, a, like, a hockey blooming type of thing and that's scary but I need her to see Luffy because if it's a situation where it's like Lu uh, Hibari likes Kobe right but Kobe doesn't seem to like reciprocate it outright but he loves Luffy mm -hmm. it could be a situation where they were all like in like uh, sword training or whatever Hibari's unreciprocated love it, like on Kobe and Kobe's like loving Luffy and then she's like jealous of Luffy but then she gets to meet him and understands like why does Kobe this like guy that I really like and appreciate and the Nate holds up the Navy why does he like this pirate so much right and it could be a really cool way because you know with Kobe it feels like he's biased towards Luffy he's Luffy's the guy who got him into the thing mm -hmm. we need more Navy people like Smoker to see the good in Luffy right and it needs to be people like who are instilled right like hibari being related to akainu would be a really dope background for that where it's like the granddaughter or daughter of akainu could come to like luffy and i love that like mini story arc i just don't know where or when that would fit in i just need hibari to like live i mean that's I'm, the one character i'm gonna tell you this right now hibari's not going to pass if okay, it's, it's I hope it's not gonna happen. Yeah. But like, you went full slice of life, One Piece, right there. <laughs> you know that, right? Yeah, 
I mean, like, Kenny Mon- Kenny it sounded good. It sounded good. It sounded good. Kenny, listen, Kenny Mon and Suru, we got them sitting in silhouette at the end of it, and we wanted Kenny Mon to die. At at like, <laughs> no, I'm glad that at least Oda kept Kenny Mon to have him sit with his wife at the end. If he didn't do that, then Kenny, I would have rewrote the story. Not, you know what gonna, I mean? I'm not gonna lie. I wish we had more of like that scene instead of just the cuffs. Yeah, that you, you cup, know, in that the, panel was goaded though. Yeah, I love it, that it was goaded in the anime. Cool, they're gonna expand on it. It's a I whole episode. I, I it's gonna, gonna be a filler it. thing. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna watch it. So, Gia, would you watch that? Yeah. I would watch that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of Gia, do you watch the anime still? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're yeah. very avid non-anime watchers. Really? Over here. Yeah. They, they, they. It's I look good. forward to every Saturday. Oh, I love good. Watching it. I, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all right. So what I will say is, it's like um, we all assume that Garb's justice is the justice of love, right? In comparison to like. Um, Luchi's, who's like dark justice, and then Akainu's, who's is like yeah. I think it's pure justice or absolute something. Like that. Justice. Absolute justice. Yeah. So it would be nice to see that Kobe, if he was to awaken a conqueror's moment, would be from the side effect of love for protecting Habari, but also it would, you know, be reminiscent of when he stood up to Akainu. He's now standing up to Aokiji, and now he can do something about it instead of having somebody like Shanks save him. So I think that would be an interesting parallel to show how much Kobe has grown as a character. And I think that Habari doesn't serve as like a catalyst for that. I think she'll have more importance on the story overall. Because I don't think like any woman should just like, you know, be something that a guy just goes further. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you know me. Like I want chicks to like succeed in one we, piece. Sword is and, doing a good job. Yeah, right they're now. doing an amazing yeah. job. So for her to like be that catalyst, but then also contribute to yeah. the fight as well, like I think that would be so dope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be really good. I like the uh, Cole, King of Lightning. He he was sat there and analyzed Tabari from a power scan. He's like, wait, she sniped all of their bullets before they got out with the flower? I'm like, yo, that's so sick I'm, that we're analyzing I'm her like that. I'm going to assume that it was like a shot that mass spread and just does One that way or order. another. That, there's no that way. focus, though. There's I just, no way. I don't even care. She could be a god-tier sniper. I'll give it to her. That'd be dope. <laughs> Usopp needs competition. How many other sharpshooters are there? <laughs> Honestly, like, she... If Hibari ends up being this dope sharpshooter, dope. I love that. Yeah. You know, it, it's definitely uh, something cool. And, I, you know, on the sense of justice thing, I the way I see it, and I think, like, Garp might have had, like, a version of it, and I think Kobe might push it forward, is I see it like... Uh, Familial justice. I think Garp was fatherly justice, and Kobe might be family justice. Uh. And the reason why is because in that moment that he stood up for against Akainu, the the words, the inner monologue that he had, the thing that he cared about was, yeah, soldiers are dying, but the reasoning is because every soldier has a family. Every person has a family. So, like, when you're fighting somebody and you're wasting lives, mm. you have to realize you're destroying families behind it's it, crazy. right? crazy. Cares about other people's families, but not his own. Well, no, in that <laughs> regard, in that regard, <laughs> that that's right, his, Gia? His daughter, yeah. Where was the energy yeah. <laughs> like for that he has for Kobe when oh. Ace? No, in that, oh that the, the family. What happened when he threw Luffy off a river, like off a mountain? But, so I'm, but I'm the one coming for Garp. No, no, but so Larry just uh, showed that he didn't watch the second half of that Garp video because uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it explains why you know obviously back in the 2000s uh, parental uh, care is a little bit different obviously Oda's also probably a different parent than most people but that being said Oda uh, foiled Garp in the character Morgan the first marine ever shown Morgan's and Garp are actually the same character there's this guy who has this crazy uh, like ego behind it right but they're not backed by certain things and they treat their children differently and what's interesting is Garp inherited his child and is now raising that child and so the family thing that you're mentioning I've said that for more so for Kobe and I think that uh, Garp's is more of like the fatherly one and the reason why I say that is because he said that like um, no matter what uh, as long as no blood is spilled, I call that peace. And he also said, like, uh, in terms of the reverie, like, the reverie doesn't make sense because no king can ever care about other people like their own. And so when you look at what Garp did, he did uh, adopt, no matter what who it was, he did treat everybody like a family in that sense. And a family, a thematic that's throughout it, even to Doflamingo, he didn't even want to kill Corazon because he was family. That brotherly bond was there. And so that whole thing about family justice that Garp might have is like even when you're a family and you fight, you wouldn't kill each other, right? So that's what Garp means about not spilling blood. Come on, bro. (laughs) 
What do you mean? Actions speak louder than words, bro. He let A's die, bro. He did not. Oh, he, my gosh, I, bro. We're not going to You cannot. No, you're not going to no, cap. Because y'all always say this, and it's such. It, it's cap. He literally let Luffy pass so that A's could be safe. Because like, y'all, he y'all, he, do y'all forget he that he did he that? He wouldn't do it himself. Oh, my gosh, bro. He wouldn't do it himself. Oh, my gosh. It's Damn, like, yo. Y'all just ignored Garp's character. The, 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 being, being a y'all father. Y'all the inner struggle. I've damn, lived my entire thing, life toward this moment. Imagine your dad oh knows gosh. you're going to just be, you know, exterminated. And he's like, yo, he'll be all right, yo. His brother will save him. <laughs> he just That's like, not what when happened. He, when he has the power like, to do it. Did y'all not see the turmoil that Garp was going through during Marie for He was shedding actual tears. Yeah, because okay. he let Luffy hit him. Yo, oh. He could have done something. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay, so he the, was like, damn, yo, it's hard being a great dad and a bad dad. So I'm going to just bro. choose to be a bad one because I, I can't. I, I have a hard time being a good no, one. No, it's fine. He has his Marine adopted child now, so he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, and you know this. All One Piece oh dads adopt other kids. So, so the, <laughs> That's the not thing that you guys are looking at it, though, is that you're disregarding the main thing about Garp is that it's yeah, these people are his children, but the Navy is also his child. His child. He shaped the Navy. Era of Rocks. Gold Roger. So, new Era. That The... the Everything. Imagine you built up T.O.P.T. Right? You built this up. Yeah. And it's like this for what fifty years. It's now also your your child. You made that right. So, so he had to. It was two two sides colliding, and it was a conflict thing. It wasn't that he didn't want to save Ace. He did. He asked Ace, "What do I do now?" That was the struggle. He I, asked Ace, I, and the I thing is, he you. also said, "Like you guys chose this path. This is the other. This is the path that I created for you guys." And the conflict there shouldn't be disregarded. Yeah, he didn't save Ace, but it wasn't an easy decision. It was probably the hardest decision of his entire Damn life. You. Something right. that would change his opinion and bring him out here, where if Garp isn't in Sword, he's now defying the Navy again. I love going how like, you just keep. Stacking up all these excuses. No, no, no. When he could have just stepped in front of that fist that Akainu threw and got punched instead and saved his son. But nah. I forgot. Self sacrifice for your children isn't great fatherly deeds. Saving Ace means like what are you talking about? He's the he's the symbol of the Navy, right? The whole point of the Marine Ford War. Kobe did more than Garp did. And Kobe could do that though. That was that was the other part. Why can't Garp do it? Because Garp is at the position if Garp does it. He, now you create a civil war. Okay, the entire world did is Co- watching. Did Kobe create a civil war? No, because he's not. He's not he's the not, father. He's not the legend about? of the navy. The oh whole look God. when Garp is introduced in the uh, chapter four thirty one, he steps on an island. Everyone's like, that guy is the legend. That guy is the navy. If you see the navy fighting each other, mm. that creates dissent across the entire world. Damn. So Garp is now upholding this, these values that he lets Kobe and others so, and Sword So Garp's change. values mean more than his kids. It's not about the values. It's about Larry, the world. You're, he you're saying you're saying sacrifice yeah, the entire. Oh, oh. No, you're saying sacrifice the entire world. For your child, but that's not gonna happen. That's, yes, and, you're, and you're acting like he's sat back. Acted out at Marine Ford and was fighting admirals. The white beard pirates can he win. Don't, he don't gotta fight admirals. He bro. can tell them just to stop. No, he has no, a high no, enough he position. Can. No, he doesn't. No, he's he a vice can, admiral. Bro. He's not what even talking fleet. about. Sengoku could. But, Sengoku could, but, but on, not him. Hold, hold on. You just said that he was the hero of the Marines. He, the he has status. more respect that's the, than a lot that's of the people. Status. That's respect and hierarchy is very different. So you're telling me. If Garp stepped in front of a kind of before he got, you know, Ace got punched in the chest and was like, yo, stop. You feel like the whole world would have just exploded the, into a civil no, war? The Navy members there also would have been like, yo, they're fighting. No. The Admiral and Garp are fighting. The, they the can't guy in the future. They can't beat the White Bear Pirates if Garp is fighting Admiral. It's crazy. They can't. Yo, yeah. They yeah. can't. Yeah. He was willing to let Kobe die, though. <sighs> Oh my God. Like, I kind of was literally going to kill Kobe in front of him. Yeah, yeah. I think that this is this is very heated, but personally... <laughs> <laughs> no, this is normal. This I, is normal. I just, I think that he should have done more. Like, come on. He should have done more. There was more that he could have done than just nothing. We're going to have to agree to disagree. We can agree to disagree. That's, That's fine. Disagree. Listen, this, this side of the table, right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> not, not according to the YouTube poll. Well, YouTube... <laughs> 
Yo, listen. <laughs> yo, that YouTube post crazy. 81 to 19. But I'll be telling yo. 82 to 82. I'm sorry. Chat <laughs> doesn't know, know anything. <laughs> Chat never knows anything. They're the wrongest people ever. Yo, Larry, ever. make this sure they watch keep us. Keep that same right. No, 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 no. Yeah. Guys, keep that in the TikTok clip. Yeah, we are. <laughs> you know, YouTube chat yeah. doesn't know shit. Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah. make sure, make yeah. sure they see it. I'm gonna do that. All right, cool. Oh, cool. I do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see it. I'll see All it. All right, anyway, I'm watching. Let's, you let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. All right, so uh, we go back two years ago on an island in the New World. The time right after Aokiji and Akainu fought over the fleet admiral position, Blackbeard arrived, and people are terrified. They're running. Blackbeard bursts through the bar doors and tells Aokiji to unfreeze his people outside. Uh, we see San Wolf, and he's frozen. Uh, Blackbeard, uh, hold on. He tells Blackbeard uh, they attacked first and to shut up. He, he's also in a state of mourning, so it's not the right time to test him. Then the next minute, they're drinking and laughing. Aokiji reverses his powers on the Blackbeard's crew. Uh, Aokiji continues to make jokes. Um, he, uh, Aokiji shows his scars from their admiral battle. Katarina Devon asks Aokiji about the man with the burn scar. Burgess mentions the red pony glyphs, and Blackbeard states there's two he can't find their locations. Aokiji acts as if they think he's the burn man, and they all laugh. Then Lafette, is it Lafitte or Lafette? I say Lafitte. You say Lafitte? I'll say Lafitte yeah. then. Uh, Lafitte. Uh, mentions that the man with the burn scar rides an all-black ship and anyone who gets too close to him ends up getting swallowed by a gigantic vortex of water. Aokiji says he doesn't know anything about it, which is kind of crazy. Lafitte then whispers to Blackbeard about taking Aokiji's power. Uh, Aokiji hears them and freezes them all over again. And then Blackbeard apologizes, like sort of begging. Um... He tells Aokiji he wants to recruit him instead because their interests may align. We go back to current day, and Garp tells Aokiji to unfreeze Habari and to come back to the Navy. Aokiji freezes Garp, and Garp breaks out of it, clutching Aokiji's face and throwing him into the ground uh, using hockey. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on the chapter so far? We'll start with Gia this time. Okay, well, first, first of all, it was really cool to see... Um Aokiji's personality because yeah. I feel like we never really seen too much of his personality and it was nice to see like wow he's pretty human he's actually really funny Yeah. so it was cool to see him joke around and especially with Blackbeard's crew it was just odd to see them interact in that way with him and also what was I going to say oh and then in the end to see Garp just absolutely <laughs> like I yeah. wasn't expecting to see him do that to him. I don't think Aokiji's done for, but um, he's either playing it safe and, and his ulterior motives are making him hold back and just letting Garp handle him, or he's going to come back next chapter and like go in yeah. with Garp. I'm not sure yet, though. We'll see. That's going to be interesting. I know. I kind of want them to fight like hardcore. But Do you think we'll they're see. close? Do you think that, like they're close in strength? Like Kuzan can actually just 1v1? I I don't. I, I hate power scaling. Not for me. But um, I think I think it would be a pretty close fight. Probably, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> I'm about to say something really controversial. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. If, yeah. if Garp, get some people going. <laughs> if Garp were to die, I wouldn't be the most mad in the world because to see Kobe, like the rage that Kobe would have, would be insane. Because we never got to see him on screen actually fight and go crazy. So. It, it would kind of be a worthy sacrifice for what we would get in return. Yeah. I don't know. Spin, Gio. Go ahead, Seb. <laughs> All right, so this was a great chunk of chapter here. Um, I love every bit of the Kuzan and Blackbeard pirate dynamic here. They went from, like, he froze them, and it was like, who do you think they hit me first, blah, 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 just kind of petty stuff. And then they're just talking like an actual pirate crew does, like, in the ocean, I love that. Like on, on bars and stuff, they're just chilling, eating. I thought that was great. He's telling jokes. Uh, he called them ice pops. I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then they start talking about the burn scar man, right? And this is what Par was alluding to earlier about how Oda Oda be knowing what the the community talks about or what they theorize because he literally had Alkiji say who me in regards to the burn scar because it was a huge thing that he is who that person is. I have my own thoughts. Um, you know, I've, on this pod, I've talked about Bullet before. I think we might be getting a new character. 
who I thought was brought up in the story before, uh, but I think this might be Davy Jones. That's who I think it's probably. Yeah. I think this is what it is. It's going to be new pirate lore around a significant pirate in the pirating lore in general. So I think it's Davy Jones. Um, and I think, I don't know if it's like the same as Zunisha, where it's like he's been tasked to do something, where um, like he had to basically give somebody uh, permission to use the pony glyph, or like. I have to deem whether somebody's worthy enough to use it, which is why he was able to meet, like Roger met him, and he determined that Roger was worthy to get the bro- pony glyph rubbing. Um, I don't know if like Shanks or anybody else has it, but I, that's that's where my, my head kind of goes. In regards to the the uh, ship itself, um, like the, the Whirlpool stuff, I think Oda does a lot of red herring stuff where like Lafitte's talking about a Del Fruit. That instantly tells me it's probably not that. So whether it's a Fishman, that's able to use like insane abilities with tides, elemental or elemental hockey <clears throat> to par vision point. Um, I just don't think it's Delfruit. I think a lot of times, if that's the first thing that comes to mind for somebody, that's just not what it is, right? Like odds are, like that's how the Blackbeard pirate view view things. Delfruits are the end all be all to them. That's why they wanted to attack out Kiji later in the chapter. But like, that's probably not what it is, and that's not where the storyline is going. So I, I'm thinking Davy Jones. I, I've been working on a script, actually, to try to do a video on that, but we'll see. Um, I thought it was really funny with the Burns Card thing. As far as Blackbeard recruiting Aokiji, I'll say this. I said it before. I still think he is a covert, deep agent with S.W.O.R.D. I do. I just think he's acting extremely well. But elements of this and what Blackbeard was saying to him do still ring true to him, are still, like, real to him. Because he's still duty-bound by his... uh, in my head canon, his allegiances to Sword, whether Kobe and other people know about it or not, whatever his mission was, he's still duty bound to it. What Blackbeard's saying is, yo, listen, whatever you want to do, you can do that under my crew. That's what being a pirate is. You're allowed to do whatever you want. And he's realizing like, yo, there's elements to that that I just don't have as Marine, that I could never have had as Marine. So even if he is undercover, even if he is still duty bound or doing a mission right now, there's truth to what he's hearing and what he's feeling. And he's, part of him is like, yo. Remember we talked about with Vegapunk. A part of him saw what the Celestial Dragons are doing and thought it was terrible. But another part of him was like, I want to be that one day. Something in Aokiji said, yo, I had to go kill Saul. I had to do that to Robin. I had to do that to O'Hara, etc." If I can just do whatever I want, I won't need to make those kind of decisions. So even if he is still duty bound, I think that the, that conversation was just great. Um, and just, I thought that whole conversation, I thought it was great. I thought that was the best part of the chapter to mm-hmm. me. I'm just talking. Um, and then Al Kiji versus Garb, like I said, man, um, I think we actually might have gotten foreshadowing to what I think is what the big thing of this situation is. I think we get to a point where, because Gar- like you alluded to earlier, Larry, Garb made mention that he's not what he used to be already. And it's not the only time Oda's ever talked about older characters highlighting they're not as strong as they used to be. In this situation, Gar has to fight an admiral, basically in his prime, who could fight for days, and several other tricky devil for users. I think Garp's losing. I know he got the upper hand here, but that's how that's how Shonen works. Whoever gets the upper hand early, if they're not narratively supposed to win, that's how it works. They get the upper hand early, fatigue, whatever, trickery, whatever happens, Garp's gonna end up being frozen. And Aokiji talked about this in the chapter already. If Blackbeard uses the Gura Gura while Garp is straight up frozen, I don't know. I, I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying, bro. I see it. Hashtag Frozen Garp. Oh, my God. Hashtag Frozen Garp. But that's all I got. That's all I got for now. Go ahead, Par. <laughs> like uh, Sebastian said, uh, you know, this, this was a crazy bit of, like, chapter that I think a lot of the community has been waiting for and I think we got a lot more than we even expected right because like the camaraderie that the Blackbeard Pirates uh, had it it like it's not just any crew it also just feels like you're like on the Straw Hats ship just like on a different version where there's all drunk messes right like just an opposite one where like Nami's you know making oranges and then Kyron Devon's is drinking booze right like it's it's just like a flip and I thought it was super interesting because, like Gia said, you got to learn a lot about Kuzan and something that is, 
it kind of made this chapter a little weird because you went into the chapter, or at least I went in the chapter, and I feel like a lot of people did, questioning every single word Kuzan had, right? And it's like, because is he in sword or is he not? And it's like, we had to read his words so carefully. And at the end of the day, you're just looking at him. He looks like he's having a good time. He's looked like he's just being him. It looks like he's he's uh, being genuine throughout this entire thing. And so, like, I... I completely get the sentiment of him possibly being in sword. Crazy actor play. And you know what's cr even funnier is all the admirals are based off of top tier actors that Oda actually really um, um, is inspired by. So Kuzan being um, uh, Matsuda, um, I forgot the full name, but he plays Detective Story, which is a character that, you know, has to play like undercover, which is very interesting here. Um, so. I I can see a world where he is undercover, but I like to go back to uh, his conversation with Smoker because I honestly didn't remember it in full context. What I do remember is the words like I am me. I remember that. But when you reread what he says, it's kind of it, and this is obviously after he he's uh, met up with Blackbeard. And so he says, I never thought the world government would was the be all end all. You don't. Um, you don't have to be affiliated with the Navy to accomplish things in the world. And there are some things you can only see when you remain independent. And then he goes, uh, like, Smokers is like, why are you here? And then uh, Aokiji goes, it was fate that brought me here. Which is a line that all of the Blackbeard pirates say. If you go back to Impel Down, there was that, I forget what page it was, but literally all of them say something about fate, destiny, luck, every single thing. So now Kuzan is also... It was also after they the, beat Magellan. Yeah, so they all say that line, and now Kuzan's in that boat. And so, and then he goes on to say, uh, a smoker, like, what uh, what are you up to, blah, blah, And then he goes, I'm just me. And that gets reiterated reiterated in, the, uh, in 1081, where, you know, um, he's basically saying, I'm following my own sense of, like, what I want to do. And that's what Blackbeard said. Blackbeard said, like, yo, you could do what you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. And we see Kuzan on Punk Hazard actually advising Smoker. He said, yo, you should inform Sakazuki and the Admirals to mobilize because Doflamingo is a crazier version of Boa. And that's the entire thing where he's still, this is, he's a year you're at least deep into being a Blackbeard pirate, and he's still caring about what the Navy does. So whether he's evil or good, I don't think that's necessarily the question, right? I think him being himself is probably the best version, and that version of Kuzan, if that's the one we're getting, that I think he can beat Garp on, um, you know, cycle all back. And I don't think that he is in sword. I don't think it, uh, like, I, I have a video coming out where I break it down. I don't think he has to be in sword. But again, it doesn't mean that he doesn't sympathize with the Navy. He grew up with the Navy. Even in this thing, he called, uh, he referenced uh, his conversation with the Kainu saying that there were comrades. Uh, they came up in the same system. Like, there's an obvious uh, care. He didn't freeze Kobe. He's still talking to uh, Garp as if they're like sort of friendly, right? Like, it's like, yo, I really like that about you. You say what's on your mind, um, but I can't do that. You know, he still has that feeling towards Garp. It's not like he's a complete, like, evil monster like Blackbeard, and I don't think he needs to be that way. And me personally, coming um, all the way around. Uh, Full circle, bro. Uh, to, to the fight part actually a little bit further back with the, with the <laughs> with the Blackbeard thing I think what Blackbeard said was really cool because well two things actually I wanted to know Shiryu Shiryu probably had my favorite line in like in recent history because he just spoke like facts where it's just like the world government should have poneglyphs like I don't know why they don't it, the best way to prevent someone from seeing the one piece is collecting the poneglyphs and if the world government isn't doing that I don't know why they're not and so Shiryu just saying that to me like thank you someone understands because like, they trash bro I, but they shouldn't <laughs> you, you be you think they got for us? I hope so if because Shiryu said it like it almost makes it feel worse if they don't like I feel like because Oda had Shiryu say it now Hard. they have to have it you know damn well they got no point with okay that's one thing now Blackbeard <laughs> saying what he said about the pirate allegiances and the alignment interests that's like the same thing Luffy would have said right like I, I love that we're getting this parallel and it's like Oda somehow is making it feel good on both sides, and it doesn't feel forced. It makes a lot of sense. Um, um, going back to the burn scar thing, I don't think it's dragon. What a lot of people think about uh, the the people say the ship is jet black, but that's just because it's in the manga. In the digital version, the official digital, it's color like dragon ship is not 
pitch black or jet black, whatever it said. <laughs> um, we can talk about options later because it's there's a fun a few fun options. But as far as like the Kuzan Garp moment, I see it like a world where Kuzan like captures Garp. I can see like it, the fight getting to a point where he captures Garp. He doesn't want to kill Garp, right? But we have to wonder who else is there, right? Shiryu's there. I think it's a world where, like, if he has Garp frozen, Shiryu looks at it, right? Shiryu gave us the logic of, like, this is what this is what a logical person would do. If I wanted to prevent a pirate from getting to the One Piece, I'd take Poneglyphs. Same logic applied to the Garp. I have Garp frozen. Let Hero of the Navy. Ain't no way we're holding him hostage, right? Like this, how you can't just pull a ball and a shackle on Garp like you did to Kobe. What do you do against Garp? What happens if he unfreezes? That's a monster you don't want to leave loose. So I see a world where Shiryu actually just like could take what Kuzan did and then ends it there. And then that's where Kuzan has to question his path. And I don't like that either because I I recently put out a theory where I like I want Blackbeard to fight uh, Garp. I want Blackbeard to be the person who ends um, Garp because it'd be the parallel from Whitebeard, the two like father figures who, hey, most a lot of people don't agree with the Whitebeard side either, right? Um, so I see, I see that, and as far as how Kuzan could possibly get the edge over Garp, I don't even think it needs to be like a 1v1. He has like four Blackbeard pirates who should be really, really strong. And maybe they're not individually strong enough to handle these guys, but like a 5v1 with Kuzan and Admiral, I think they could do something. You know what I mean? And one of them is an island, right? Like you have an island man and a frozen man. Like the between the two of them, you gotta be able to do something, right? Like put him not nine feet under, right? Like put him like nine thousand feet under. That's what an island man can do, right? Like and then freeze it. Like there's so much you could do, honestly. And and I don't. I'm honestly worried for Garp. Every time, every moment, I'm like, oh no, Garp is Garp is fading away in my eyes. It's it's. I I need Kobe and everyone to leave first, and then Garp to go away, right? Like that's the that's what needs to happen. Habari mainly, right? That's what I need. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's a lot in this in this section too. Yeah. Like when did y'all get so disrespectful? To to what? That's my question. Like to when, did that, when did y'all start disrespecting what? Garp, bro? What do you mean? Like, like my man's got frozen, and the very next panel he was unfrozen because he it unfroze was himself. Ice, though. That was the regular ice ball thing that white people. I, listen, I don't care. I it's think different. all your disrespect is going to him. It's different. Y'all both said I see epic hold stuff. Hold on, hold on. You had enough to talk about. Y'all, y'all went off and said the exact same thing that he would get no. frozen and then get taken advantage of. Like this ain't Gar, bro. I seen Dofi break out of ice. No, that wasn't really Dofi. That was a clone. No, it was Dofi. No, was it was he? Dofi. Was he on the clap? No, it was oh. Dofi. One, two. Who else got frozen? Uh. Whitebeard. And what happened immediately after that? Nothing. Y'all be holding this. Yo, Saul didn't even die one from frozen ice. Uh, so just stop. I didn't say the ice was killing him. Relax. I didn't say the ice yeah, was killing him. I didn't say Neither did he. Just relax. Ladies are putting words right. relax. where words don't need to be. When I don't know what's yeah, happening. I don't understand why people me, gotta always you're on that side the of the table, generation. Give him some clarity. We didn't say that. Uh, no, you, you. Mm. Look, are they not saying that <laughs> you? Idea? agree. Okay, listen, you, agree? you guys, you guys said that you think that Garb's gonna get frozen and they're gonna lock him up. Away. No, I said it's impossible. Well, I, said said you, I said he would get frozen Poor over said, time they're gonna take because advantage he's him. old. I already made okay. mentioned that he think, would be okay. old. Okay, even like, without all of like how powerful Garp is, that would be so lame. They're not going to do that. Like, Oda's not going to do that. That's so boring. All right, so this is what I see. I see, so for me, and oh, I haven't put this video out yet, but like, I, again, I don't, I, I need Blackbeard to be the one here. And I'd love it if the entire crew is there because the way I've been seeing it is Garp, could be Blackbeard's Kaido in the sense of Luffy and their crew. Like, even now, people don't think that Gear 5 Luffy can beat Kaido. But through fighting Kaido, he elevated to the level where he's at. And a lot of people don't know how Blackbeard got to that power. And it would make sense if we put a fight like this in the forefront where Garp has that notoriety on the Marine side to give him that space, Bro. right? And now on the other side of it is the Blackbeard Pirates. I was downplaying them, but when we really think about it, what we learned about Devil Fruits ever since Onigashima is if you 
uh, are one in mind with your devil fruit, you can awaken it. And then we go into Luchi and Kaku, and I know you guys have different thoughts, but here we are with the Blackbeard Pirates, where there's a man who's been sick his entire life, and he's a sick, sick fruit. We have a man who's been the champion of, of the world in strength, and he's a strong, strong fruit. We have all of these characters who literally are like perfect matches for their fruits, so I see them awakening. And now if you add like four awakenings plus an admiral, and then maybe some things, some other ones, that I think that would be enough to take down one man. Yeah. Right. I, I mentioned that he was fighting Kuzan and several okay. tricky okay. devils. Okay. Larry just talked about words. Ignore him. Ignore him. Larry just talked about words. I feel like I feel like we've been going for twenty minutes just listening to y'all rant about nonsense. One, two. Garp Whoa. is that guy. And don't get, it twi- don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I didn't say he wasn't. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You, you spoke you, already. You spoke already. Yo. DDT Larry not like this. Also, I'm Garb guy. He was down talking Garb all of last hold, year. Hold on. Hold Give on. him a panel of Garb showing up. Now he's caping for it. Cool. Cool. You Larry. had your turn. That's how Larry is. Right. Yeah. I you see had, Larry. You had your turn. Larry. You had your turn. Switch up be crazy. Switch up wasn't crazy because I've never said anything disrespectful about Garb like y'all just did. One, if Iokiji, let me just let me just make logical sense for you too, because uh. you clearly are not there. If Iokiji happens uh. to just freeze the entire island or do whatever awakening he does, what does Pizarro do? He can't move, so he knocks Pizarro out of the question for even trying to like harm Garp or anybody else that's on the island. But that, that goes both ways. I mentioned that before. If Kuzan decided to freeze cook, all the sword members, then they I'll would just shatter them. Right? No, cook. because the sword members might not even be frozen. Because Garp might be able to just combat that. How would he combat Unfreeze that? Unfreeze other people using hockey. hockey. Okay, all right. All right. Let him cook, let him cook. Go, go, can, keep on. Can, can, can Garp not do that? Unfreeze other people? Like if Garp just conquers hockey out, right? Do you think that the ice will still try to touch Garp? No, it would back off. It would halt to a stop in front of him. What if he was to do that when all the, his people are around him? Like, could that not happen with Congress hockey? Hey, no, nah, I mean, I have my theories. I wasn't including them in here at this moment, but yeah, I listen, like man, where you're cooking. Uh, listen, man, I'm not trying to get into the power scaling aspect because that's just not what I'm trying to do when G is here. But I will <laughs> say this. The disrespect coming out of both of y'all mouths is crazy. Yo, we have anyway, receipts. We have receipts. Anyway. What I think what's more realistic than Garp just getting frozen and whatever, like, oh, get him away. I think it's more realistic for him to fight a bunch of, the, like, the Blackbeard crew and everything to the death and take out a bunch of them with him and he dies like that. That's so much more respectable and Bass more of what I would expect from him. I agree. To, yeah, you know. No, I agree. The last mm-hmm. movie he has, by the way, is Big Bang Collision. I'm, I'm keep on saying that. He has Galactic Impact, Big Bang Collision. He has Meteor Fist. All of them are universal moves. So am I allowed to go yet or no? You, stop putting noise in our mouth and show it, bro. Yeah. So uh, I, I love the whole, this whole part of the chapter. I thought this was the best part, to be honest. Uh, I think the question for me has always been, like, how did uh, Aokiji and Akainu's fight kind of go, and what was brought up between them when they were, like, fighting? Because anytime you fight, there's always, like, dialogue being said, right? And just to see, like, they're like, okay, so what did Akainu say after that? And then Aokiji repeats what Akainu said, and, and Akainu said, two men who came up the ranks together in a fight to the death, I could feel something boiling up within me. And to me, it's like I've always thought Akainu's willing to kill his own Marines and take, you know, people that's on his side out. And I've always wondered, like, did he have any pushback against it being like Aokiji because he came up with him? Like, did he feel this, like any remorse for having to go up and just, you know, and fight for their values? And then uh, Aokiji mid, you know mid-conversation with Akainu who goes, uh, what'd you think? You're made of magma. And it's kind of like he's still, like, joking with Akainu even at that point when it was very serious. And now I can tell even further that what I suspected was correct. If the only reason Aokiji actually lost in that fight because he wasn't willing to go as far as Akainu was willing to go. And I think that now proves that. Like, there's undoubtedly that... Aokiji probably had the finishing blow, probably wouldn't take it, because if he did, he'd probably end up murking Akainu. And that's not what his justice is about. That's not what he truly believes. And then we see with the free will aspect that's coming on later in the chapter, it even goes back to him freezing Habari, but not freezing anybody else like Gruss and stuff like that. Like, to a degree, he's not Akainu. 
He's actually the opposite, and that's why his devil fruit, narr- you know, narratively, is the opposite of Akainu's as well. And that does point to a certain factor. How cold can he truly be as a person? Like, what, what extent is he going to go to if he's not going to, you know, murder people? At, you know, is like, I, I just don't know where he stands, and I, I, I agree with all three of you on your takes. I just, a piece of me really just wants him to redeem himself after the O'Hara incident. He even says it. Like, I still have this image of this little girl and Saul. And I I, I felt like that's always stuck with him. That that was always an imprint on him with the world government being like, damn. Like, I, I, I almost had to, like, murk a little girl over people who were just searching up knowledge. How am I supposed to be a Marine after this? And if he is a true Blackbeard pirate, I don't think that will ever be. I think he will always play both sides. And I think that if Blackbeard ever gets out of line, he's going to take Blackbeard out. Now, for Garp, I don't know if Garp is going to get taken out. I just don't want him to get taken out. Not by Kuzan. I feel like that's, I feel like, that's like, I don't know. I'm tired of the old sensei getting taken out by his protege, like, you know, formula. I want to see something different. And I think Oda's too good to follow that formula. He's gonna make it exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, let's let's take a sponsorship break, Marv, and then uh we'll get back to everything, guys. Yeah, so if you guys need to use the bathroom and stuff like that. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe you're having trouble sleeping, difficulty with a relationship, or just struggling from low self-esteem. Listen. I've been there. We've been there. If so, then today's BetterHelp wants to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. Talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your own convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire, simple as that, to help assess your specific needs. And then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule a secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. I happened to sign up at one point regarding my confidence issues. Next thing you know, my confidence issues are not issues anymore. I'm doing pretty well in that area. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced better health therapist. Special offer goes out to all that One Piece Talk listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-O-P-T. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-O-P-T. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Restroom. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the show yeah, so get far. Yeah, the piss out of those tapes. <laughs> like, in the meantime, I'm going to try to read some Super Chats because we're way backed up, bro. It's bad. Um, but all right. Let me try to find where I was. Larry did say some good things, but one thing I saw the chat, like, I think misunderstanding was, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think Larry meant that, like, Kuzan would kill a, a Aokiji in, or Kuzan would kill a Kainu in that situation. Mm-hmm. It was just like... You know, this person wants this more than I do, and yeah. I can get what I want in a different way. So there's no reason for us to injure each other in this regard. And then it came out like a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, Larry's take is completely <laughs> absolved because he thinks Kuzana over a Kainu." And yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't think that's what he's saying. So I just want to clear that up. All right, before, before we get I back don't know in, what huh? was said. But I'll tell you this. I'm supporting you. Chat doesn't know anything. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Do not ever think anything about. What it they was say. your mods too. I'm. Yo, That's mods so too. Damn. The reason why they're mods is because they're the biggest haters to a degree. <laughs> Yo, listen, mods. Yo, I'm on I, your side. I, I, I make everybody that's a mod that doesn't agree with me. It it's balances pretty, things out. It's pretty true. Um, but Gia, this is your first time here. I know we just got back from break, but how are you feeling? Good, good. I, I've never really debated with One Piece before, <laughs> if you guys can't tell. Um, so this is a new environment for me, but... It's going good. You so messing far. with it? Yeah, yeah. Is no it too appreciate. much? No, I'll tell Par no. to calm down. It's always Par. <laughs> no, I was, no, it's always Par. It's <laughs> usually the thing is, is like I'm always talking to my friends who are into One Piece, but not as into it as me. So I'm the one where I'm like, 
think this, believe this, this is what happens. <laughs> so being in a room with people who are like me, but 10 times more intense, it's like, oh, wow, never experienced this before. So this is a first. Um, yeah. I'll say yeah. It, it's a gateway drug. You, yeah. you, th this is the evolution. You're going to be crazier <laughs> than us. You're going to come on to an episode and just break the table. Just like, I'm here for some <laughs> yeah. serious taste. That would yeah. be wild. You should have <laughs> saw when Par first came here. He was equally nervous. Yeah, okay. I was nervous. Yeah. I actually, uh, Larry... Uh, it was this was like my first on camera appearance actually. Mm. Like yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I did yeah. like one stream on my channel, but then I came onto that one piece talk and I was just like trying to get comfortable. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then because we mentioned like debates and then dinner and all the mm. stuff, it just made it a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, now now we can go back and forth. Yeah, yeah we, now Par is like yelling at me. Yeah, we got like kicked out of like a what were we at? Cheesecake Factory or we something? Multiple cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Yeah. We got kicked out. We got kicked out yeah. Cheesecake Factory? At Hola Hans, we had people <laughs> who like Yeah, they created cheesecake a crowd. Factory. There's an old oh, dude. Oh, there's various. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we went to multiple and just got kicked out. You know what it was? It's because it, we were never, we were the loudest people to the point where like other people in other sections were like looking at us and wondering what we were talking about. And they tried to join the conversation. You remember that old man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like usually when we go out too, not only are we like the loudest and stuff like that and we sound the most interesting, uh, we stay there until closing time oh sometimes. My gosh. So it's like, Yo, you guys gotta leave. <laughs> <laughs> All the asterisks, we loud, no, Larry, Larry loud. loud. No, one, that is two, not true. Two, the Hula Hans thing was even more incredible. The fact, I think it was a championship basketball game or something. Yeah, it was like the playoffs. And we were at a sports bar, <laughs> and like there was people watching, and we were the loudest ones while like <laughs> history was being made. Piece. And then like this <laughs> yeah. old dude, like seven years old, he was sitting there for the entire like four hours. He didn't like, he didn't take the check until we were done. And then he turned around and he's like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I really enjoyed listening to it. And then we told him, he's like, oh, I should get my grandchildren on that. We're like, that's so sick that, like, these people stayed longer just to listen to us argue. It was so funny. I don't even remember what we were arguing about. But no, it was mad fun. I don't yeah. remember either. It might Everything's have been so blur. It just merges together the after VV, a while. The yeah. VV Conquerors thing. It might yeah. have been that. Yeah. yeah. It's always something you have to say. Yeah. All right. The so effect. we have half an hour until calls. We'll get this last question out for the chapter, and then we'll do calls after that. All right? Bro, we got a bunch of soups waiting. Yo, Super Chat's gonna have to wait. I got guests, bro. That's a lot. All right. They wanna hear we from We gotta them. speed run. We yeah. speed run it. Listen, after. we gotta give it a sec. We gotta finish the chapter. Yeah, we'll get All that. right, so uh, we head back to Winter Island where Blackbeard was fighting Law. We see the Polar Tang submarine destroyed. Blackbeard's laughing and tells Law now he can't escape. Law and Beppo lay on the ground. Blackbeard says all the hearts uh, pirates. Uh, wait, what? Stole the same. Oh, all the hearts Law stole will be the same pirates on Pirate Island, and they'd love to see him. Beppo remembers Chopper giving him a rumble ball, so he eats one. Blackbeard tells Law he doesn't know if he wants to sell his fruit or use it to give him eternal life. Beppo then goes full Sulong form and attacks all the Blackbeard pirates. Uh, Blackbeard, confused, mentions the moon's not out, so how could Beppo do that? Law whispers he can't love, uh, leave his crew behind, but Beppo continues to swim away and doesn't let Law have his way. He tells him that the captain can't pass away. Narrator says the heart pirates are defeated. And we'll start with Par. What did you think about this ending? Yo, I got a lot to say. I mean, one thing that was really funny was, um, you know, uh, when it came to the law situation originally, it's like we were just coming off of Onigashima trying to understand where these guys leveled up to the rest of them. And I think a lot of people instantly understood that, like, Blackbeard versus Law is favoring Blackbeard in a lot of ways. Then we gave, like, Law had his crew show out, and then Beppo was in the in the background. And so when we were getting that situation, I was like, maybe Beppo comes out. And I was just like, what time of day is it? I was looking at the panels, and, and I was like, someone in my chat was saying it's sunset or whatever. I'm like, how do you know it's sunset? And I was looking, I was like, where's the sun? Where's the moon? All that stuff, because I was hoping that we'd get Sulong Beppo. But then I gave up. I was like, Oda's not going to just give us a random nighttime, right? And then we get this very interesting development where I think a lot of people, uh, it was really interesting because I assumed it was a rumble ball, but a lot of people didn't see it that way. And I was like, Chopper like literally only makes rumble balls. Right? It's all he really kind of makes. And I think that's a really interesting connection because one of my, my original um, Chopper video, his 
made it so that like his human fruit is so so pivotal to like one piece and i think a lot of people are like sleeping on that connection where it's like a literal animal ate a human fruit and that blurs the lines of like what kind of creature this is at the same time we have minks who are also saying that they are just humans with more fur and so a lot of people separate like no these are minks these are humans and chopper is a reindeer that ate a human fruit and i'm saying they're like no they're all the same thing what we learned from vegapunk recently is the devil fruit like literally makes you what that thing is right like you dr the dream world that created the human fruit is believing that you are human so whatever eats that becomes human at the same time it's like the minks don't see them separate so then why are they separate Chopper's rumble ball probably affects Beppo. And the thing that was super interesting about it is um, when we were first introduced to the rumble balls, uh, Chopper says that his it's the he's affecting the wavelengths, I believe, of his devil fruit, which sounded like something that kind of got lost throughout the series. But then we hit Annie's lobby and he's fighting Kumadori. Kumadori brings out semi kikan, which is like a martial arts type of thing where he's affecting his entire body, his hair, all that stuff. And then Chopper's like, no, that's scientific. It's biofeedback. I know, I read about that. I know about that. And then we see Chopper actually doing that to himself. Like he can extend his horns. He can extend his body, Kung Fu point, monster point, all of these different versions. He is doing that. The same thing that Kumadori is doing through a separate way. And that's through his rumble ball. And so this rumble ball seems to be pivotal for so many reasons. And what I think happened here was um, that mink medicine that Miyagi brought out on Yashima at, after the raid, Chopper saw that and decided to study that. And at the same time, Beppo saw Monster Point in uh, when Chopper br brought it out against Queen. And Beppo probably requested, like, yo, can I get that? Like, will it work? And at that time, he's probably studying what Mr. Miyagi created, that mink medicine that worked on Zoro, which is super valuable, right? Anytime something works for the Straw Hats, he's, he, he'll study it, right? If Sanji, same thing. Um, when Sanji got injured, he's like, I don't, I feel like he said, like, I don't think I can fix that. Um, but so I think that uh, Chopper incorporated that mink medicine and that's super important because uh, of two reasons. I think that now that we see that it can make him go so long, like make Beppo go so long, I think that mink medicine has moonlight essence in it. And that moonlight essence is what Chopper incorporated into his rumble ball, which now we might get a so long version of that, which a lot of people look at Sun God Nika, right? The awakening that Luffy had as like a version of Sulong. It's just a human going Sulong and it's a different version. If you can, if you look at Minx and like the them looking at the moon as their awakening and Luffy going full white as his awakening and Chopper having a human fruit, he could probably awaken in the same way, similar to a Sulong Mink. I wouldn't be surprised. And the 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 um, the agenda part that that I don't know if Larry did his homework on, is I think this comes full circle. I don't need to do homework. I'm knowledgeable. I think this knowing. comes full circle at um, and it's gonna shock a lot of people who didn't watch the video. It's gonna be helpful for Zoro because Zoro is part mink in my opinion. I see that uh, that parallel there, <laughs> where it's, it's, Yo, Gia really looked at me like what? <laughs> the so. There, there's a very long video, but essentially where it comes down to is um, um, my favorite part of it is the parallel in Onigashima between Sanji and Zoro. If Sanji, Sanji and Zoro, Reitsu, Enma, Sanji learns about Lunarians not directly. He like sort of learns about it and he gets what we kind of assume through Queen, through context clues that he's getting Lunarian DNA being activated, right? At the same time, Zoro's taking a medicine that's specific to Minx that they don't think will work, but it works. And it works really, really well. And so that parallel is the end point of the theory where I see that Zoro, that might have been a hint that like we're hinting that Sanji has Lunarian DNA, Zoro might have Mink DNA. And it comes back to another point where uh, uh, one of the things about mink uh, lineage is that mink lineage is similar to fishmen where uh, you contain the DNA of all your ancestors. So if you're like a kangaroo mink, you also, if you're, your dad could be a bear and your other, your grandfather could, could be a giraffe and the further one could be like a lion. It could, that's how it works. And what do we see out of Zoro? All of his movesets, animal based to the point where he can actually imitate some of the animals to the point where after he took the mink medicine, he said the most random thing. He's never said something like this in the series where he became more animal like. He told King in chapter 1023, um, I'll 
bite your throat out with my bare teeth if I have to. And he's never said anything like that, ever. And it was right after he took that mink medicine. So I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, did, if he um, had mink DNA, but then also that could answer what that um, the Grim Reaper was. Because the reason why Sulongs go into, or minks go into Sulong form is because they look at the moon and then they get uh, the memories of their ancestors. That's what Jinbei told us. And that's what like was corroborated really later in the story. And so I wouldn't be surprised if that mink medicine allowed Zoro, that Grim Reaper was probably an ancestor to Zoro. And that's like a fuller, I, I didn't put the part two to that theory, but um, I think that this inclusion here that Oda did is probably more important than we realize. I think we're getting a situation where um, the minks might be on the same tier as Lunarians in terms of like historical importance, and it's gonna be super, super important and highlighted. Why else would Oda keep like the Sulong one relevant, but then also um, as important as this, where it's like he could go Sulong monster point and then like take out Blackbeard and his crew and escape. It's like kind of insane when you put all of the pieces together. But um, yeah, like this entire chapter is super, super important. I think one of the main ones is actually the Sulong thing. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Gia? What do you think? Uh, about this part of the chapter. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I don't oh, know. Oh, Gia, uh, it, on this show, every time Park comes, he does something. We have a segment called One Piece Madness. Mm -hmm. That's what Park just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, to start out, uh, finally got to see my man again. I've been waiting for this chapter for a while because <laughs> everybody in my comments has been telling me he's dead. He's not dead. So, yeah. let's move on from that one. Um, it was sad to see that. Uh, his ship was gone. It was very sad uh, to see it sinking, but honestly, I was just so overjoyed that Law was still alive. Mm -hmm. But it was um, it was crazy to see Beppo finally have his moment. Yeah. Because I, I'm one of the people that have been calling him useless for so long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, oh. I probably said before, I hope his whole crew dies so he can join the Straw Hats and have a crew worthy of him. But um, <laughs> ne I'm, never mind. <laughs> I got dark real quick. Jeez. I love Beppo. I think he's amazing. Uh, it was crazy to see him go so long, and it, his form looked insane. But is this the first time we saw, like, confirmed to know that Blackbeard can have another fruit? Or did he say that before? He, he can give fruits to other people. Like, but he can he take said, it away. And yeah, he said, away. or I, I might take it for myself. Did he not say that? In the official, it says, I can't decide whether to sell the fruit or to use it. And Aww. then he references getting mm. eternal life. So that would be okay. meaning having somebody use it on him. Yeah. Well, I read a leak, so that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> so never mind. But, um, yeah, I'm just happy that Law is alive. But I think the, what I do need to say is there's so many people comparing this to Kid's defeat. Mm -hmm. And that needs to end <laughs> immediately because mm -hmm. Kid got taken out one shot. Okay, Law actually put up a fight. <laughs> um, he's... Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay, so. Can we get some W's in the chat yeah. for Gia again, man? I posted, Can we get some W's? She's actually, speaking facts right now. Yeah, right no, now. I posted a TikTok about this and I had to delete it because the comments were getting really heated. But basically, I called Kid some names that a lot of people didn't agree with, anyways. But wait, Law. Then you're gonna make Larry fall in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can share some of those names. That's no, what this is for. Basically, I just called Law. I'm in. No, not Law. I called Kid a bitch for what he did. <laughs> Because he pulled up, he really thought, he's that dumb, he pulled up to Shanks and thought he was going to be able to do something. Like, let's think about this. Think this through for a second. And he wasn't people, thinking. That doesn't make hmm? no sense. He wasn't thinking. No, but what's sad was, he is, is that he, he was thinking and he still, like you said, thought, he was like, yep, eight, one plus two is 17. Exactly. Got it. I like Kid. I like Kid. Like, not to get this twisted. I do like him, but not as much as Law. But, <laughs> um, and a lot of people said, like, Law would get one shot at two. Law would never be dumb enough to put himself in that situation. Mm. Ever. Law would never do that. Most people wouldn't put himself against Shanks. They wouldn't do that. So let's stop comparing those two because you, you can't. Like, law, law over kid any day. So, yeah, that, Wait, those I are my a, thoughts. I have a question, yeah. though. Yeah. So because I think one other parallel, though, is uh, law 
it at the end I forget what chapter 1063 like Law looked like he wanted the smoke right mm. and he had the same ultimatum give me your poneglyph rubbings right and mm-hmm. d- like I feel like it you can't trust Blackbeard, right? Obviously, right? I think Kid had a better option. If he gave the Poneglyph rubbings, I would trust Shanks to let me go, mm-hmm. right? Maybe Law understood, like, Blackbeard's not going to let me go if I just give the rubbings, mm. right? But, like, let's just say he... Do, is there a world where you think, like, Law thought he could beat Blackbeard? Is that, like, an understanding that people have? They like, should have it. hockey? They should have it. It's, it's kind of interesting because it's, like, at the end of the day, they both went into this fight and Law's crew is now with Blackbeard. Only right? reason Law lost is because he doesn't have a crew. Sad. That's it. Wait, the only reason? That's the Wait, only reason. Law's crew is low-key better than kids at this point, right? Like, they can kids swim. Killer. They got they bubble, have, bubble they, beat. Do you for, did you forget who was on the rooftop, too? Yeah, but, okay, but the reason why Beppo wasn't there is because he'd solo, no, right? It's because it was a full move. No, because Beppo wouldn't be able to do anything against Kaido, where Killer was know. able full to full do moon? so. It was full moon, though. Oh, also... Law was going not just against Blackbeard, okay? There was, what, four or five of, four, four of his crewmates? Go ahead, yeah. Gia, don't even, just keep uh, like, saying facts. <laughs> let's, let's take that into consideration, because as we know, for the most part, Law's crew is pretty useless, and he was protecting his crew against not just Blackbeard, one of the most powerful people in the entire series, but against four other of his crew or five i don't know the number but um that's insane that's an insane feat that he wasn't absolutely destroyed like yes he he was passed out like he he was still conscious he wasn't killed at least he was okay? conscious like he was conscious and kid if he was put in that situation <laughs> done i i don't care oh yo sorry <laughs> listen bro she ain't say one lie <laughs> The, a lot of some people might disagree on. I've heard people say they think that Kid could uh, put a better matchup against Blackbeard. No. I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Best of I'm gonna just uh, clip that and send that to the show. Yeah, listen, man. G is fake fact, man. G is fake. Yeah. You know I'm very else? passionate about law, so. As you should be. Yeah. Yeah. Law cool. Yeah, Law's dope. He's a little bit more than cool, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he had yeah. his own disciple, so. You can stay on that. Yo, what? Hold I on. don't want to sit <laughs> on the same <laughs> side of the table when you say that, though. <laughs> so, I can't. Listen, he was telling on his brother, bro. Oh, like my. That. We can get into that later. Anyway, I guess, is it on me now? Is mm-hmm. it on me? Right, are, mm-hmm. are you done? I, I'm good. All, All right. right, go ahead, Seb. All right, so, again, agenda piece always reigns supreme. So, I, one thing I really was happy about that did end today was the black beard is top one agenda oh it's still there it can't be it's it still can't yo, be. yo y'all saw chestnut it, it can't, it's still it there it cannot bro. be even chestnut was backtracking when she did her no then here. she went on live yesterday and went on listen off. i, I love black yeah i love black beard to death i love him so much he's never been top one in the verse okay this is just proof positive of that you got yourself and three, four, or five, however many G has said, people with you, all with Delphrus, and you fighting just Law, Beppo, who wasn't even in Sue Long originally, and what, John Barr and some people in some water, no. And they all took, the, every one of them took damage. Every one of them, from, from the looks of it. Blackbeard had marks on him, uh, Burgess has marks on him. I couldn't tell with Van Auger per se, because just, it's just too far for having the va- having the warboard fruit with you Listen, and Blackbeard's but there. That's kind of crazy. He's not damaged. top one. I don't know why people believe that in the first place, but this is just proof it's not. I'll say this: I love the panel of the polar tank getting split like that because I don't know why I didn't expect to see it, but I didn't. Right? I don't know why. Like when I flipped to the next page, or whatever, so, I was like, "Oh snap!" Like it really got like destroyed just like kids but like i don't know like they're underwater you know i just it just looked crazy to me i thought it was really well uh drawn i uh, like that john bart in the distance just floating away because he's a bum you want to talk about anybody's a bum john bart's a bum he's the worst the worst recruit of all time that's what that's the one flaw law really has he can't recruit for crap <laughs> um i thought it was really interesting that blackbeard knew about the capabilities of the Ope Ope no Mi and giving eternal life. I mean, I guess that could be in the book. I thought that was more you had to have direct knowledge of the fruit. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think um, Drake's dad knew that. I, I Don't Flamingo knew that. I thought that too, but mm-hmm. when you go back to the chapter, I think when Treble's talking about it, okay. he says that um, 
people the like people refer to this fruit as the ultimate fruit. Okay. So it was like a like the, a rumor type of thing. I guess like similar to the burn scar. I'm with you though. Yeah. Like it's kind of like how does Blackbeard know? Like, he where knows everything, bro. From? He just knows yeah. everything for yeah. whatever reason. I did love Beppo not just letting it go down like that. Where he got the, like, when him and Chopper had this conversation and he got this rumor wall or whatever he gave him, I was like, what? Like, where was this? Where was this Arawano? Like, where, like we could have used that. We had a whole lot of minx. Whole lot of people. We could have used that, but whatever. I'm, I'm giving Chopper a pass. I'm, not, I'm tired of bashing Chopper for his Wano showing. Um... But, you know, Law took a hell here. And not a major L. Lost the ship, lost the crew. Um, I had similar thoughts on this for my Ace Piece theory that I'm right, or video that I'm doing. But shout out to Beppo for finally stepping up and showing why. I don't know if he is the, the right hander, I don't remember, but this was a right hand move. Mm. Like, it sucks because he had to sacrifice basically the rest of the crew. And even Law was like, yo, go back. But he's so hurt, he can't tell him to do it you can't make him do it but shout out to law surviving i know i'm a huge like kill law guy like i i say kill everybody i just have i i want so one piece should be so much darker than it is in 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 canon in the main story but it's better characters to die though bro, yeah. the, the point of, oh, the point <laughs> of a character passing in a series is to pull heartstrings when you're done and off habari like who cares bro Kobe. What are you gaining from that? Kobe hockey. Baby. I'm talking heartstrings for the reader and heartstrings you for the character. You all love What? Bro. That's more than just heartstrings. Listen. Like, Law's like one of the best side characters in the entire series. Cool. If not the best. Cool. I'm not saying he's not. He shouldn't die. I'm saying he, he could go. <laughs> no. Why not? I'm, no. I'm he can, he can go. Listen, okay. Okay. listen, okay. listen. Okay. listen. That... I'm not saying he will, <laughs> but I'm just saying if Law was to go, Y'all would all be impacted, probably more so than y'all were with Ace. A and if Oda does it right, it could be great. Yeah, it could be great. Listen, guys, to give you guys context, I walked in the room and he was slandering Corazon to Gia. And I'm like, what is happening? And now the Because he the feds, bro. He switched up on his brother. Okay, but now now you're just like law dying, this dying, everyone dying. It's kind of... Have you not seen my work? Far? There. This is, this is who I am. But I just like that we got the... The nostalgia text box thing from the uh, the narrator saying that laws the, the hard pirates were defeated, and we saw what happened to each of the three captains that left from Wano. Um, I didn't think it would be this soon <laughs> that Kid and Law were both out uh, as basically competitors for the One Piece, but here we are. Uh, we're in the end game. That's that's everything that Oda's been doing over the past few chapters tells you we are in the end game. Like no matter how much how invested you are. To certain characters like Law or Kid for whatever reason. Uh, if you ain't Shanks, Luffy, or Blackbeard, and you're a pirate captain. Buggy. Buggy. If you ain't Shanks, Luffy, or Blackbeard, and you're a pirate captain. I know it. Or Buggy. Buggy. Yeah. You ain't got no right to One Piece, bro. So, no. here's what it is. That's it. Wait, this is actually an important question. Are you, are you Buggy Gang? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's actually, a lot of people in the chat that would want to know. It's a question for our, our, our viewership. It's a huge contingent I, of them. What What do you mean like, by you that? Like, you like Buggy. Yeah, I love Buggy. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah, that's all, don't say yeah. anymore. That's we, good. When I met Gia, yeah. she was in full Buggy. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm a big fan of Buggy. They didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I just need to confirm that. I love him. I you, just got, you just got, like, maybe, like, 500 supporters instantly. <laughs> like, instantly. <laughs> do a lot of people not like Buggy? <laughs> <laughs> the reason he was you in that buggy, playing buggy. The he reason, lost the, my choice. Yeah, he yeah, lost the bet. He lost the. He, we, it, was well, it, was a, it was a, a donation <laughs> goal to troll him because all of his cosplays are that. Does it like buggy? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. how we got into cosplay. He wasn't on the cosplay boat, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then and then through that, then he started enjoying it, which was really funny. He enjoyed it as Buggy. Well, I took like 120 pictures. You're going to enjoy it at some point. <laughs> yeah, he had fun, this which is, is great. This is a shocking development. <laughs> I was not expecting to I'm glad this. I asked that it's, question. It's, it's like a deep vitriol for Buggy. I'm sorry, this is our first disagreement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, has, it happens. I like how we both just like pointed okay. at him. <laughs> <laughs> It's, okay. um, it's good to know Gia's buggy game. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess him. so for you. <laughs> uh, became less of a fan immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you know, 
Blackbeard clashed with Law. Lost his clash. Shanks didn't clash. One shot kid. Blackbeard used both Devil Fruits against Law. Couldn't overpower him. Shanks, one shot's kid. Uh, I'm just thinking about it, you know? I'm, I'm just going over it. Uh, Blackbeard came through with Stronger, Van Auger, and Burgess. All of them have Devil Fruits, and Law has Beppo. And uh, took major damage. Shanks, one shot kid. And killer. And killer. And killer. Together. And their ship. He ain't yeah, the ship. He ain't do the ship. Uh, he could. He, he. Uh, so, so, so when, when, when people uh, say Blackbeard is top one in the verse and his devil fruit can do everything, I think this chapter showed something very important. It showed that he begged Aokiji to unfreeze his comrades because why? His devil fruit couldn't negate the effects of what the devil fruit causes. So, he can't negate everything. Two, Blackbeard just ain't that guy. Law right now still doesn't beat Big Mom by himself. Kid wouldn't be able to beat Big Mom by himself. And together, they didn't beat Big Mom. They ringed her out, which was ultimately a defeat. Technically, it wasn't. So when you look at this, and you continued the whole Blackbeard is top one in a verse, or you're riding Blackbeard's coattail, and you're just saying, you know, Blackbeard is the narratively stronger. Well, guess what? Who's going to beat Blackbeard at the end of the day? Luffy. So Luffy's always going to be stronger narratively. But overall, it just screams that Blackbeard isn't Yonko level. Not yet. Because if you have a hard time, and you got four crewmates, and Law is that one-man army, and he's, you know for sure he can't take down Big Mom right now, Guess who else Blackbeard loses to? Not only Aokiji, not only Akainu, not only Shanks, not only Big Mom, not only Luffy, not only Kaido. He sounded like he ain't top five right now, right? So what I'm going to say for all you Blackbeard fans, keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, man, because we've seen this with Kid, and look what happened. That's all I got to say. If you got any rebuttals, just, just call me a hater, bro. I want, I want just to call some, me a hater. I like giving context to what Larry's saying because like context don't matter, bro. We talking facts. And be, also, 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 Chopper is a drug dealer now. Yo, bro, <laughs> and nobody wanted to mention that. Yo, like, yo, shout out to him because he was a junkie before. Yo, yo and now he's so now, that so now he was popping pills. Now he ruining the pirate community. Hey, Listen, oh, man, I'm sorry. The yo. line between a pharmacist and a drug dealer is yo, kind of bro, bro, <laughs> bro. You think you think you think Beppo got it for the low? I don't. I don't even think. <laughs> nah, yo, you think he paid a playful price? I'm gonna keep it a buck. <laughs> I don't even think Beppo asked for it. <laughs> I think Chopper just, to Chopper was like, yo, try to hook him in. <laughs> Chopper was like, yo, I got that for you if you need That's it. That's what I was picturing the, when I thought when I first realized, like Chopper, him. hey, I got this for, for you. The, for yeah, the the and, and, and Beppo's just like chilling. Yeah, and he's like, yo, you want some? <laughs> Tell your like, friends about me. Yo, you <laughs> saw what you saw what I did on Onigashima. You want some of that? Like, <laughs> but good what, stuff, bro. But what does what does this oh, also no. prove? Besides joking, what does this also prove? So a big. Uh, problem of mine with Egghead because Egghead has been so perfect so far like the whole arc has been amazing the one problem I had was Luchi's awakening and we were all saying that it seemed very artificial right I think this proves that even if Chopper can do Sulong form to a degree then most likely Vegapunk can cause artificial awakenings and I think that that's a very important factor that we should now look at and be like, this is 100% possible. Now, it was already possible in my mind because it's Vegapunk, right? Like, he's creating organs, like replicating organs and creating, like, children mixed with DNA. So I think now there's going to be a future where we're going to see Marines are actually being artificially awakened. Um, I think that's super cool. And... Uh, it's very interesting, too, because I know I like to get on Kid, but there's something very important about Law, and I think everybody missed it, is that ultimately, wherever Ds go, they bring a storm. And I think that Law himself, the reason why he's escaping is, I think it's a little bit of fate. I think because he's a D-Clan member, there's some importance to him, but I think there's something that goes even further with Law, and it's his secret name. Water. 
water. And we don't know what that entails within the D-Clan. He might be one of the most special D-Clan members we have. So it's going to be interesting because I think that if Oda took him out now, we would have never learned about the water name, right? So I'm looking forward to that mostly. And yo, shout out to Beppo, man. I, I, I feel like it, it sucked for me because I was like, yo, why didn't we see Beppo go so long in Wano? And it was saved for this moment. Even though I feel like it's a cop out. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy that we saw it because he looked terrifying. Like, polar bears are no joke in real life. Like, they yeah. eat their young. Like, they are crazy, like, carnivores. So I was really excited. But <laughs> listen, man, law lives to see another day. Oh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So that's no. that's all I yeah, wanted I to some, bring up. I got some boost for uh, the yeah, and then we're getting the super chats. Yeah, I don't, um, on the on the the artificial awakening that Luchi Kaku had, I we've talked about it. I don't necessarily agree with that particular uh, situation, but I do see a world where, like I mentioned, I think that all humans can also have a similar awakening. It's just like not all of them are going to have it like that, right? But clearly, it's possible. Luffy has the Hito Hito fruit a human fruit and he that's what it looks like right it's so similar to what we see out of a a sulong and the thing about the rumble ball that also uh people forget is he made that rumble ball based off of kareha's research and kareha is this mystery character that was the first person to bring up the will of d first of all um she somehow knew about it she's also like randomly super old like Oda like noted that multiple times like the oldest a human could be is like 139 and he's like oh but she's 141 or something like that um, post time skip and so I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Kreha was like you know Vegapunk said in in the Kuma flashback that um, he was keeping tabs on like a west uh, uh, west blue doctor right I wouldn't be surprised if Kreha was connected to Dr. Vegapunk at one point in life whether directly indirectly Kreha had some kind of research and if Dr. Kreha's research is what Chopper used to make the rumble ball because why would the rumble ball be useful for Dr. Kreha it would be useful for Chopper right and if that research allowed him to manipulate devil fruits that would make sense that it would go back to Mads going back to Vegapunk and Vegapunk building off on that and creating pseudo awakenings artificial awakenings so that that one is a uh, I, I definitely see that you think yeah. she's his mom <laughs> vegapunk's mom yeah no i, I was I have to, the, everybody cares about people's moms until it's vegapunk yo it's that, crazy. that the, in terms of madness i wasn't expecting that but like the on the blackbeard one i feel like a lot of people are going to be hating on that but like for me the conversation gets annoying because it's like I get it, Blackbeard. I get the desire for Blackbeard to be an end stage antagonist, right? But like, if you look at this chapter, I, I think every single one of us had noted like this parallel Oda's making with the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats weren't made like they're not just strong automatically. They work towards it, and so I feel like that's the same thing we're gonna get for Blackbeard. Like the struggle that he had with Law. Yeah, he's maybe not. He's not gonna be top one now. Maybe at the end of it, but you can't say it like now because it wouldn't be as interesting either, right? Like Blackbeard hopefully comes out of this fight, comes out stronger, right? That's why I like the idea that Garp could be that barrier, that ceiling that he shatters to become it higher matter, up in bro. the verse. And don't so matter. with the Blackbeard conversation, I think like uh, you know people forget like. Look look at look at this chapter. Oda's painting an entire parallel here with the Straw Hat crew. And something that I, I also won separation Where, though where is the parallel, was bro? in the way they act. They they act very cool, similarly. They, act the they, they they probably have the same dream. There's so many parallels, but the one thing that isn't a parallel is it seems like Blackbeard got all these strong people and he doesn't care for them the way they were as they are. And what I mean by that is, like, Luffy wouldn't make them eat devil fruits. You know what I mean? Like, Blackbeard has his entire crew, and they probably were all on their own right. They're all individuals, but he probably, one way or the other, poached these devil fruits for these people and manipulated them to get, take these devil fruits, whether it was their decision or not. Um, but Luffy would never do that. And yeah. I, there's, like, that emphasis on devil fruit powers that keeps on getting focused on. Law noted that, right? Like, yeah. like devil fruits are a weakness, and he's, like, not you know it comes with a, a risk reward thing but that risk reward isn't uh something luffy would take and i think that's another thing that's super important in terms of like the hockey side of things i think that luffy hockey even that side alone overall, is more important overall the hockey side is the more important role yeah but 
Blackbeard hasn't fought anybody with that type of hockey, and Law yeah. for sure is just a reliant double fruit user. So even if Blackbeard was to get stronger, he didn't get the strength that he needed from this fight in order to compete with somebody like Garp. Yeah. Like that's well, I mean, at the end of the day, that's but, what it but is. But then you could go into Onigashima and say the same thing about so many people. Like that's why the raid failing sentiment was so strong. Nobody thought that Luffy could go into and fight Kaido one v one, and that's until why Kaido, we didn't get that. Until Kaido showed the hockey feats, and then right. Luffy started to know what hockey feats he needed in order to beat him. Exactly, but the thing Blackbeard is, he didn't, didn't do it that. solo, right? Yeah, Blackbeard didn't so, have that. So if Luffy doesn't have to do solo, and the entire point is the parallel, their their introduction is paralleled. Like you can't even debate. The it's giant gonna be it's gonna be right? parallel, so, but Black doesn't mean that have the he's same. There. Yeah, I'm not saying he's there. Yeah, I'm not saying he's there. I'm not saying Luffy like Luffy didn't go into Onigashima the same yeah. way he came out. I don't think Blackbeard should go into any situation the same way he came out. He didn't go into Marine for the same way he came out. He yeah. didn't go to any situation the yeah. way he came out. I so mean, that's why I see this situation with the Garp thing. He's still not there, bro. Yeah, he's not. Luffy yeah. wasn't there prior, right? Yeah. L Luffy L there though. L what Larry's saying is that he's not testing himself to get pushed to even get there, right? Like he's just not fighting. Law isn't doing that. He'd I've, have to so go fight Shanks. You know what I mean? No, right, right. no, no. He just have to go fight a first commander that actually knows how to use certain things. Well, I mean, that, isn't that like, what Luffy it. did prior to he fought Katakuri over Big Mom? Okay, but right? you're, so you're, you're stating the obvious, right? Like at the end of the day. Luffy has gone through those trials and tribulations. Right. Yeah. Blackbeard hasn't ever gone through those. And when he does, he usually jumps that character, which absolves any type of hardship or adversity he needs in order to obtain those type of uh, hockeys. So I don't want to stay on this conversation right, too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to get to Super Chat. The so one thing I will say is that, uh, and I don't like this uh, part of it, where people say that about Luffy and Kaido. Luffy jumped him with a bunch of people, right? Why didn't he fight him 1v1? He had the Minx. He had the Scabbards. He had his crew. He had other captains. Okay, okay. Also pirates, bro. Right. Ain't and no one. So, and, so the jumping thing is, is what I'm saying. If people use that to detract Blackbeard, you have to detract that no, from Luffy no, in a certain no. way. Because Bar. people detract that from Luffy. It's not the same. No, it's not the same. I, 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 no, I agree. Bar. I agree. But what I'm telling you, Let people go. say Let that. Go. Is, is people will say that. But yeah. also, like, Blackbeard tends to run away a lot. Luffy mm -hmm. doesn't do that. Yeah. So there's also that. Like, he, every time I feel like he's about to get in a crazy fight, like, and have somebody actually be able to challenge him, he runs. Right. So, and then you brought up a point about Kid, right? Wouldn't mm -hmm. you have liked it if Kid had the knowledge, the brain sense to, like, I can't fight Shanks and left, right? It's like, it, yeah, it, you, you know. Yeah, you call Kid a bitch. So, so like, <laughs> I, I, if, if Kid is anything, he can be weak, so, he can be a bum. He's not a bitch. My, my <laughs> overall point is that, is that like, these things, like, jumping the, 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 it's the context that matters, right? And it's, like, if you contextualize all the other ones, they're doing the same thing. It's no, just a different not. context. They're not. Luffy got these people on his side. Don't matter. By them willing to help him. That's the de separation of context with Blackbeard. Sure, you have Marineford was like, if he fails, I'm bouncing. Zoro wouldn't say that. Part right? That's the difference. No. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, the parallel is there. You can't discount the, the parallel. The parallel that you, you, we keep making, right, is that Blackbeard cheats his ways, Luffy doesn't. That's the parallel. Would Blackbeard go up to Kaido and tell everybody else to go down to the Onigashima floor so he could fight him by himself? Never. Thank you. Your conversation is dead in the water. The other part of it, though, is that's not how it started, though. It's okay. Yeah, if Luffy if Luffy gets to a point, right, and then he says, everyone get out, and then he gets bounced off the island into the water, and then Law's submarine saves him, a lot of people will say that's plot armor. Okay. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm saying is that the you points you're using to discount Blackbeard are the same points some people use to discount Luffy, and they say it's plot armor, right? Yeah. But there's and context the thing, but, to everything. But right, they, right. But, and so what I'm saying is that, that what you're saying about Blackbeard not being him so adamantly is like, yeah, I'm He's not the main character, but he's going to—the parallel continues. This is the thing that most people have a very hard time understanding, and I know it's so hard because intelligence-wise comes into play. Uh, Blackbeard is not there yet, but he will be. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, th no, I, that's but, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's so, what I was giving you, yeah, yeah. because a lot of people so, would take your thing and be like, no, Blackbeard's not usually like, he's not even top 10, not even top 5, he'll never be there. But, like, that's not what you're saying when you're saying nope. that. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Yeah, they won't understand it, part. It's not a part <laughs> the of the nature. The way you explained it. <laughs> Listen. Man, you were fighting me when I'm trying to help you. Let's get to these super chats so then we can get to calls. Uh, we, we got a lot Gia's of just, like, here between us, like, just enjoying. <laughs> She's like, yo, this is crazy. Oh, yo, dude, this is going to be funny. 
<laughs> we, we got yeah, a lot of grace. No, I'm calming down for Z. You crazy? Z go. loves it. No, no, let me wait, read, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Gotta get to the calls. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Half good. the episode right. is just par. <laughs> all right, I I'm gonna try guys. to zoom through a lot of these. Uh, so thank everybody for the super chat. Yes, thank you. In advance, uh, we got ten dollars from Flame C. It says, "Let's go." Oh, we already read that one. Uh, we got two dollars from it is Wes, I believe. It says, just wanted to send love from the OP Scans team. I think it's Wes from OP Scans. Oh, yes. Thank you, OP Scans. Yep. They're the people that translate. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We got that another $2 was. from JT. It says, now nah, where the F is Lawrence? <laughs> we got another 10 from JT. It says, Gia, you have no reflection because in because nothing in this world can reflect the beauty you possess. T-O-P-T <laughs> on top. I... I, I Poetic Riz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we Maybe another... skip the Riz super chats. We get the one piece <laughs> super chats. Listen, man. Uh, we got another five dollars from Project Iceman. It says, "Hey guys, glad to catch you guys again. Do you see Chopper's Awakening as similar to Brawly situation? Strength of Monster Point, human size reindeer." We got to answer these super quick, by the way. Yeah. So he said Brawly. Brawly from yeah, Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Ball Z. Damn, uh, I didn't. That's not my ballpark. Maybe. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, we got another $2 hmm. from Bushy Brow. It says, I see I use the twin CGI for Par and Gia. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a our fan base thinks that the twins aren't real. Oh, okay. For whatever yeah. reason. <laughs> We're also not real. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we got $20 from our guy, Joy Boy Mark. It says, Larry, I agree with you a lot, but Mihawk Def does have Conker's hockey. I guess. <laughs> Wanting to fraud right? watch is happening. Oh, just no. are, where are you on the Mihawk as on fraud watch? I'm sorry. Do you think Mihawk could be a fraud? Um, no, okay. but never mind. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it. Just say it. Just say it. I'm not a power scaler, but I think Shanks is stronger. Yo, show that's it. The GM, that's it. <laughs> go go watch her video for that. You did a, like a um, question and yeah, answers, yeah. and you addressed it. And that was yeah. the, the, I agree with that one hundred percent. What yeah. you said was Thank was you. accurate. But like people don't want to hear that. No. Like it's so funny. We got another five pounds from the broker. It says, "Hi guys, looking forward to another great stream. Hoping to call in again. Hopefully not last. If I do get through, I have a fun Ryuma theory for you. Shout out to the broker, man." He's, yeah. like, from Europe or England, somewhere over there. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember where it was. It might have been London. We got another two from Strahd. It says, oh, snap. Larry then said, I can be free. I'm going to ban someone. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we got another two from AH. It says, first stream, very cool. Thank you so much for stopping by. Another five from Terrence Matthews. I was confused like where Gia also... I was confused like you were. Gia also, you're beautiful. Thank you. We have a couple of those in here, so Thank you, be prepared. Uh, we got another five from Caleb Brown. It says, "Gotta give." Where's a my beautiful chats? <laughs> Whatever, bro. We got another five. Can't from be Caleb beautiful too. I came back after a year. <laughs> Hello. Has Hello, guys. That hasn't been a year. I'm exaggerating. Gotta give a special shout out to Par and Gia, both amazing parts of the community. Would love to hear Gia's favorite character. Much love to you all. Thank you. And my favorite character in One Piece is probably between Luffy and Law. Solid, apparent solid. by the conversation yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh we got another five from dire wolf it says just popping in for a quick hi because i'm at work have a great time guys chatting with gia she's amazing ask her about her law obsession <laughs> thank you dire um y you guys know i'm i'm addicted to law but that's that's besides the point. addicted i have a shrine he's a doctor he can help you with that yeah yeah oh are you goodness. also reading sanji's books <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, all about law. The, the I, have, the <laughs> I have a special folder on my phone for that. Oh, my no, God. You know what's funny, actually? <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I'm not lying. Oh, <laughs> okay, <man>. yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? I, uh, I need to build me a folder. <laughs> you cosplayed law, I think, at, was it Comic-Con? We went to Comic-Con, yes. but you went yeah. the day before. Mm -hmm. And you, so, female law, and that female law chapter didn't come out. So, I was telling everyone, like, yo, I saw someone cosplay, <laughs> and it was you. I didn't know you yet. And then, like, three days later. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was such a funny it's thing. Yeah, I do have a figurine of law, an NSFW figurine, if, uh, if we wanted to know oh how my deep my obsession goes. What? But that's it. It's probably balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no. man, I was gonna make a room joke, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> D 
Lee Mahone, uh, another $10, that says, Theory, rocks is chained to the last pony lift. He is the man marked by flames for punishment for killing an elder on God Valley. The elder son was Shanks, where Gold D found him. It's an interesting one. Hmm. We got another five from Nick Quavo. It says, Larry got the Foot Locker employee fit on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yo, my dad said that. <laughs> Had to get that <laughs> oh, man. Larry I was like, yo, what do you think about it? He was like, yo, you look good. I would have went no undershirt. But you know what it is? I, they, they can't see the color. That's what it is. I, had, on the I brought an yeah. extra shirt, you know, because with the baby, it spits up everything. So it's like, I brought an extra shirt, and uh, my wife told me to change because it's the inversion of that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been crazy. That's pretty funny. Usually I have a different shirt when Sebastian like throws up too. <laughs> I've been throwing up in a while. Anyway, uh, oh, that was the hundred from Killer Comedy TV. Thank you so much. Um, we got another two from Ice Cold Juice. Straw hats up all the way. Hashtag Vega Pack. Hashtag First Time Live. Vega Pack. Oh, thank you for being here for the first time. Yeah. We got two dollars from Bliss. It says love y'all. Had to pop in on my break for the live. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, another five from right here, Shankdom. Larry wore the referee uni show to show chat he's serious today. <laughs> that one made Marv You're not laugh. supposed to laugh. That one made Marv laugh. <laughs> the producer's <laughs> laughing at Larry. We got another five uh, pounds from Ghani, my guy. It says, y'all know I had to show some love. Unfortunately, I'm not like broker. I got to get some sleep. <laughs> Keep crushing it, guys. I'll try to be more present. Oh. Y'all got to do that, guys. Yeah, thank love you, guys. You guys are so nice. Another five from Drek the Drek. It says... People really believe that Oda, who doesn't know English, is referencing a fan-made term that originated from unofficial English translations. Yes, we do. Anyway. Yeah, he knows English. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he knows English. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, another two from James Hudson. It says, 500 in chat, let's go, hashtag buggy gang, hashtag Larry has bad takes. Uh, another five from Louis Talavera. You're going to hear this like 40 more times. <laughs> I saw the color spread of Garf's attack and saw red lightning surrounding him. Does that mean he had Conqueror's hockey? Um, I'm still on the fence. I think most people think he does. Uh, we got another five from Anthony's crew. Who would be more likely to join the Straw Hats, a Kainu or Green Bull? I feel like there's a zero percent chance on both of those, but I guess it. Green Bull, because he'll see how real Luffy is. We got a ten from our guy Oz the Phenom. It question. says, "We in his bit." Just <laughs> wanted to. Sh just, I want to know what Baby Vision has to say about this chapter. <laughs> if y'all didn't see earlier, Part Vision was here with his son, uh, Baby Z. He was amazing. Yeah. Um, we got another five dollars and fifty cents in New Zealand dollars, I believe, from Kaneki VZ. It makes me want to have babies and not raise them like God. Jesus Christ, <laughs> bro. <laughs> is Sanji's dream slash ambition great enough compared to someone like Zoro to acquire Conqueror's Hockey? Um, in my opinion... His dream is the most impossible to achieve. In my opinion, yes. Y'all yeah. uh, feel free to answer these, by the way. I think, yes, I think people who discredit Sanji's dream are just... Yeah. His dream to him is the most important thing in the world. Therefore, you can't discredit it. Yeah, yeah. his dream is crazy hard. Yeah. Mm. Like, it's it's the hardest out of all the straw hats at this point. Speaking of crazy hard, we got another two from <laughs> Anime what? Alley. It says, which is worse, being frozen by Kuzan or stoned by Boa? I didn't go bad deep what? with this. What segue was that? I'd rather that? be stoned by Boa any day because Listen, Boa. step on my face, bro. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go frozen. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm going to go frozen. Nobody's actually died from it, so. Uh, we'll go to number two. Uh, another two dollars from Rinosuke. It says, "What's up, guy? Par in the building." Uh, we got another two Shout from Anthony's you. crew. It says, "Top five worst senses of justice in the Marines." They're all pretty bad, bro. Yeah, there's only like uh, five. Sorry, like guys. We're not gonna be able to get deep into those questions. Yeah. Just yeah. FI, because uh -huh. we want to get to calls. Yeah. Uh, we got another ten from Rono Chris. Uh, it says, "Watch the anime, Larry and Seb. Jinbei is a conqueror. Sanji's not. Garb not dying. Gia's One Piece video is legit goaded for putting people onto One Piece. Baby Par been goaded since birth. One hundred and Thank fire. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, we got another." $20 from friend Harper. It says, I hold Garp's justice like just like Luffy's egoism, benefiting from your own actions, individualism, people only represents themselves, not races or tribes, and freedom, an absence of coercion in one's life. Egoist justice. This guy's a professor at law that was, school. That was, that was beautifully put. Thank yeah. you. Oh, that's friend Harper. That's my homie. Yeah, man. I, I didn't know you knew him. Yeah. I didn't know he was a friend. Uh, the guy we met at the baby shower? 
No, 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 no oh. not like that. Only, like, <laughs> oh, I was like, what? We've been wanting to have a philosophical stream because they study philosophy, and my recent videos have been super like yeah. Uh, yeah. narrative, yeah. you know, analytical. We got twenty-eight Canadian dollars from Logan Bru Bru Bru. Bru? Uh, it says Garb literally walked up to Ace so that if Ace asked, he would have done it. Ace even said he wanted to be executed before Marco went up, and then Ace changed his mind right before Garb let Luffy pass. In reference to our Garb argument earlier. Damn, we're uh, that far back. Yeah, bro. Oh my that's God. a lot. Uh, we got another 20 from Flame C. It says, if Aokiji kills Garp, would Luffy? how would Luffy react? Uh, he wouldn't be too happy about it. Yeah. But I don't think any of us said Aokiji would kill him. I think Blackbeard is the consensus there. Yeah. We got another five from Soga King. Common Sebi L. That hurt. Uh, <laughs> Garp may be a deadbeat dad, but he's still slamming out Kiji and Blackbeard. Deadbeat dad, strongest One Piece characters. <laughs> I don't know if Shanks has anything to, to go off of. Uh, we got another two dollars from Stroud. It says, thank you to all the Nakama for this 600. Much love. I think, yeah, we had 600 concurrent viewers for the first time, so that was awesome. Uh, Another 10 from Drek the Drek. It says, killing a loved one is one of the cheapest, laziest ways to farm motivation for characters. But this True. be fine. So long wow. as Kobe doesn't magically get stronger from it. Have him break down like Luffy. Yeah. I think that was in reference to the Habari conversation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got another 7 or $8 from Bam Bam. It says, hmm, the ex-apprentice fighting his old master who's trying to protect his current pupil hmm, brings back painful memories. I guess that's a pain reference uh, from Naruto. Wait, we're way farther back than I thought. All right. Another... Yeah, we got to speed run. Like, you know, honestly, I, th like, you gotta start... I got to read these, bro. Yeah. Uh, another 350 from Ishban Bala. It says, will Blackbeard come for the buggy's lucky armlet? I don't think so. Mm. Uh, Lucas Trey, another $5. It says, what do you think about Blackbeard capturing Jay Garcia to take control over the Seraphim? Big fan of the podcast to TLPT, hashtag TLPT for German double six, brother. <laughs> I don't think we've heard that one before. Thank you. Um, another five from Ronnie Williams. It says, Sulong Zunisha solos the verse, hashtag BK Blackbeard agenda, hashtag Wani. Uh, and I got another five from Ronnie Williams. It says, my channel going to be all Larry disagreement videos. <laughs> We got another two from Mike Super 17. Chopper got the scripts for the low. Hashtag Blackbeard is not him. Uh, and finally, I think, unless I have to check trap again, it says, another five from Ricky Lowry. It says, hey guys, love the pod. Been a lurker since episode one. Do y'all think that every devil fruit has an awakening? Where yes. is the power scale peak in the series? Well, first off, thank you so much for yeah, being here. Thank you. For episode that one. long. Episode one is so long ago. That's crazy. Um, and yes, I think. Yeah, every dark fruit. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. As far as the power peak, whatever Roger was doing. <laughs> Yo, this guy's so annoying. <laughs> Yo, you're not a serious part, bro. I thought it'd be mad. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh man. This guy's so I'm annoying, to, bro. I'm trying to make sure I got them all. Matching. Uh, I should have yeah. brought mine. Oh my mine god, well. I'll go change. Yeah. I have one in my back. car, actually. <laughs> no way we all brought pin. Like, sh <laughs> oh my god, bro. All right. We got another five, uh, another hundred dollar super chat from wow. our guy, Joy Boy Mark. It says, I've been saying Law's crew is trash, but at least they were able to support Law, unlike Kid's crew. Oda said, we don't, e we don't need to remember their names. <laughs> yeah, man. Kids Crew went out sad. But thank you so much, Joy. Yes, You're thank really you. You're consistent with all the super. Yeah, so thank really you again. It. Yo, super donations. Crazy. Yeah, uh, we got another $10 for super chat from our guy, uh, Young Usopp, who is a content creator. It says, shout out to Parvision. Do y'all think that the Rumble Bowl is made of vitamin D? From the power of the sun. It is orange, and the moon uses sunlight to appear as a full moon. The real awakening of Mink. Oh my god, that's so it, it's so goofy. But the thing is, like, I oh, can't man. go too deep on young, it. Yeah, 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 I, 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 yeah. Young Usopp, uh, shout out to him because he does like freestyle. He does freestyle uh, reviews of the chapter, which is like so cool. Mm -hmm. I love that he does that because it's so unique. But the the reason why I'm laughing is because I actually have a video about teeth, and like I just pointed out in uh, Thriller Bark, Oda just like said like supplement stuff like too many times in Thriller Bark. I was like, I basically said in the video, I wouldn't be surprised if he does like vitamin D like, and people are saying in the comments. So for him saying that, I'm like, wait a second. That'd be awesome. kind of goofy. Awesome. 
But thank you, Young Usopp. Uh, we got another 10 from Kraken. It says, do you think the strength of old heads like Prime Roger, Prime Whitebeard will never be touched or will Luffy's will surpass, or will Luffy surpass Roger by the end? Larry is beautiful, by the way. You got one, bro. <laughs> Oh. Damn, that means we're catching up. There's no way someone did that before. Yeah, we only got a couple before. more. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. I you. think Luffy will surpass them. Um, I agree with that. That's the whole point. <laughs> like, Whatever Gia said, I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got another $2.20 in New Zealand dollars. It says Larry's a baddie. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> Another two from my <laughs> Only Gia saw that, so that's okay. Says, why do you, why y'all There's don't... a recording. What do you mean? <laughs> no, it didn't catch it on a camera. Mar, send me the clip. <laughs> it says, why y'all don't show Par this love when he comes, LOL. We show Yo, Par <laughs> mad love all the time. I think they mean chat. <laughs> oh, they yeah, mean chat? Because yeah. Gia was getting all the love. Oh, yeah, thank that's you. true. Because <laughs> she, she don't be giving wild takes like Par. But um, we got another 10 she from good takes, Lord okay. Sneak. Uh, there's no text there, so I don't know if it was removed or you just didn't send anything, but thank you so much. Uh, we got another two from Iceball. It says, what's up, gang? Hey, Par. Hey, Gia. JT ain't the one for you. Uh, we'll talk about JT later. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, man. <laughs> and then another two uh, from Narcotics You Dig. It says, Kid and Killer are coming back. They, the will of K? I don't know. <laughs> Not even the will of P anymore. I don't know, man. We're pushing P now. There was oh. too many K's in that sentence. I don't like it. All right. All right. Come uh, on, no. Come on, bro. Another two. Another uh, ten from JT. Two dollars and off, little bro, Ice Ball. Love the cosplays, Gia. Always fire as hell. Thank you. And then last one, uh, two dollars from Flame C. What is Keenan Moon's Awakening? I have no idea. He turned into an actual like clothing store. Louis Vuitton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he becomes H&M. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, all right, that's all the supers we have for now. I'm sorry we had to speed run all of them, guys. But yes. We did want to get to calls. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for all your donations. Thank you for so much for your super chats. Thank you so much for becoming Nakama and memberships going crazy and gifting memberships. I know that they're there. I know we didn't hit every single one, but you have to understand, as much as we appreciate you, we still have to run the show. Yeah. And sometimes it's just going to become too overwhelming at certain points. So I'm sorry, yeah, but thank you. Real quick, shout out to Joy Boy Mark for the sub, the subs he, don he donated and gifted. Killer Comedy TV for the subs he gifted. Hidden Island for the subs he gifted. Y'all are amazing. We really appreciate it. Sorry they just didn't show up in the thing that I was reading. Yes. So, okay. You. So finally, let's get this started. Uh, calls, please. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, man. That's how we do it. That's my ringtone. <laughs> hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, it's Nick. Hey, hey what's up, Nick? Quavo, what up? Felt like I had to get a call in today. Fire episode. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I, I just got to start off with some hate real quick. Topper? Topper is sorry. Like... <laughs> Like you're telling me this guy can fix the biological, like inch, like I don't even know the word. But like you're telling me he can make Mink go into Su Long, he can make himself go in all these different forms, but he can't cure the smiles. Like come on, bro, that's sorry. That's true. It's just so sad to see. I got a response. Cause this this dude's striving to cure every disease in the world, and he can't. And Oda at least can't give him this like achievement. But whatever. He's probably going to go back eventually. Yeah. But let's go into my, my question. It's kind of like a Palestinian question. It's kind of whack, honestly. I don't really have a good one. <laughs> Why well, did you even call, Cleveland? <laughs> well, I called just to say what's up. You, like, <laughs> go ahead. All right. So pick any seraphim of your choosing. What is the strongest version of the straw hat that gets soloed by that one seraphim? The strongest seraphim of our choosing and the strongest version of a straw hat. Mm -hmm. Like the losing whole crew. solo? Like yeah, which like which seraphim could be crew. what crew? Wait, the whole straw hat crew? No, just one. The whole crew. Oh, the whole crew. So what version of the straw hat? Definitely not current. This is a complicated question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. wait, wait, I think I get it. Yeah. The, so my... he's asking if there were seraphims of the straw hats, which one could take out the entire? No. no, no. no, no it's no. the current seraphim. Like, you choose one. Okay. What, what, at what point could the straw hats not beat that seraphim? Oh. So yeah, like. like don't, uh, Whole Cake Island, Dressrosa, that straw hat crew, could that Dressrosa straw hats be I get it. a, a mm -hmm. seraphim? Okay. Honestly? Yeah. 
wait a second. That's kind of scary. Dressrosa, probably no. Like, Whole Cake Island? Mm, probably no. I think you need advanced conquerors, right? For the thing is, like, there's ways around it. Like, like you can still move a seraphim and still, like, see stone cuff it, I guess. You can still, like, knock it into the water. Like, there's ways to defeat it, right? So True. it's like, you don't necessarily need to, True. like, defeat it that way. Yeah, that's fair. That's so fair. it's like... I don't know. I, I want to say the Straw Hats as soon as they came out of the New World, like into the New World. The but like, world. I might be tripping. But that's where I want. That's where I want to go with it. If y'all giving Sanji hype for hurting Jinbei, Luffy was able to do that Fisherman Island. I, I'm, I'm not so, on any boat there. If anybody start capping, I'm pointing y'all out <laughs> and I'm calling y'all out. But overall, right now, it's probably at Wano. He, wow. You need right, real. You, you think you need yeah, real. Yeah, you need real. In order to outright beat it, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I agree with that. But then in Sebastian, like, the Thriller Bark, like, Ors yeah. fight, right? Like, where they team up and squash his spine. Yeah, but like, it's, that kind of it's weird It's different. Thing. It's different. It is a Seraph now. It's different. Yeah, it's Seraphim's kind of wild. wild. Yeah, but then if you get, like, a, a bubble of uh, sea stone, apparently, you could just knock them yeah. out. Like, I don't know. You got a chain on? I always had this chain on. He's, sh- he's showing the taco he meat, too. Is it? Little taco oh. meat. That's what you are, bro. What Were you, you hot, bro? <laughs> I actually was. I was. I actually was. I was like, you know what? There's like three birds, one stone. I get the match with Larry. You might as well, you know. What was the third? I don't. I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, so you should have said two. The, the, the other one was the chat really liked it. That you know everything's okay. for the chat. The yeah. chat came in here. It's like, yo, no, I stop, came back stop to me. You got the chat. You got to glaze in the chat. Yeah, you mean they don't the like. I, when did I glaze the chat? Hello? You, you glaze you it right now. Glazed, hold on, you always do. You show too much respect to them, Gia, bro. Did I glaze the chat in this call, in this stream? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo, Listen, you guys see what I'm happens a, when I try I'm to get you guys heard? You gotta not respect the chat as much. I respect people. Don't respect them, bro. They're not real. Yo, you're talking to me right now. <laughs> What I, uh, you know, you're, the power sailing thing, I just want to add, like, to the previous thing. People forget, like, the smile fruits are equivalent to devil fruits. So unless we figure out a way to remove someone's devil fruit while they're alive, I don't think it makes sense to remove a smile fruit while they're alive. We haven't figured out that side. So when we do, if we do, then it would make sense. And so f- the one thing I will say on your, your end, the one thing I do dislike about Chopper at the moment is that it seems like, like Caesar, for example, helping him with the monster point thing, I didn't like that. It feels like Chopper goes through it and he gets like help by other people i want chopper to be like yo that's dope i'm gonna do it right but the caesar situation is different i hope that like the mr miyagi situation is like he doesn't know what the medicine is he just has it and then chopper studied it and then like reverse engineered it i'd like that way more than like what happened with caesar where caesar's like what you're such a lame doctor you don't know how to do last longer blah 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 and and you know it's crazy because that's Ooh, last song is a bad thing to put there. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's there. It's, I would have put it there. I don't know yeah. what the rumble ball is, but it's it's a good drug to be pushing. Yeah, yeah what what version of the straw hats do you think could win this? Me? I'm just going to agree with you because I'm not a power scaler. <laughs> she knows who's right. I agree, oh with, my God. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Quavo? Yeah. Quavo, what about you? Uh, I think whole kick island gets to be honestly. Because the way I'm looking at it, is I know the seraphims are really expensive. They require the great mind of Dr. Vegapunk to create. But if these could ever be mass produced, like the pirate world is just gone other than Yonko Cruz. Because these dudes aren't like warlords. Warlords have better things to do. These, these seraphims are just robots to go out and destroy every pirate they see. And nobody's going to stop them other than Yonkos. So I think it would be crazy if they made more. Yeah. All right, Nick. Thank you so much for calling out, brother. You know I appreciate oh. you, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you uh, to you and all the mods too. That's in the chat. Uh, you guys have been doing a superb job. So I just want to say saying thank that you. like you weren't saying we had the worst takes like half an hour ago. <laughs> like you Listen, think we bro, forgot? I, I go back and forth, bro. It don't matter. <laughs> we're, going, we're going on strike. We're going Listen, on strike. Oh, no, 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 we, we can't. Have that. We can't. Yo, yo, Quavo, I apologize on behalf of Larry because I ain't modding the damn thing. Listen, they know I'm joking around, man. <laughs> I, I, you can't have me be the bond. Bro. It's fifty-fifty. It bro. can't happen. It's all love. <laughs> when I talk about chat, I don't talk about the mods too much. You brought the mods up specifically earlier. I did, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, yo, my bad, gotta be Quavo. careful with that one. <laughs> my bad. They know I'm joking. It's not real. Yeah, it's fine. All right. See you later. All right, I'll see you. Wait, 
Quavo to go, bro. He is. He is. Way better than you as well. I want to point out Quavo was supporting me <laughs> early <laughs> <on> <laughs> in, in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, it's JT. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. I was <laughs> oh, hoping listen, anybody bro. but you listen. would get through, bro. How? More how, bro. Just wanted to say, just wanted to say, yes, y'all are fire. I'm glad y'all made it on my pod. Wait, well, I can barely hear him. See y'all. You, you guys can hear yeah, him? I can, I can, you can barely hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's better. There we go. We're better. All right, all right. So they hear me. I said guests. Y'all are fire, bro. Good to see y'all on here. Gia, you know, great to see you. Big fan. Par. You kind of crazy, but I love you, bro. <laughs> yeah, um, that's all that matters. Yeah, I'm like, hey, Seb, I don't know what you mean by We're going to tell you about JT later, bro. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. I'm going to have to see you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, on to my question. Yeah, We've I was going to say, like did you have one? Times. You said what? I was going to say, do you have a question? I do have a question. It actually changed multiple times, but it's from, I actually got it from what something uh, Seb said. If you could kill off three characters in the story right now to better progress the story, who would who would it be? Ooh. Oh, man. Shanks, uh, Shanks, Garp. Oh. Okay. Oh, man. Who's the third? Like, like three Who's characters off? that w- killing them would make the, like, the story better going forward. That's the yes, question? Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. I would play Usopp alone, just to, just to troll you. Shanks, Garb, Law. Yeah, that's your op. Just know. Um, I don't have three, but I want Doflamingo to die. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Never. Please. Ever. I think it's Shanks, Garp. I, I, I've i always said that they're probably going to die in the series, but um, I don't really have a third one now that I think about it. But I, I got think three. It would make sense. Easy. Um, Replace Lo with Marco. Give that I don't think that'd do much. Oh. I just need the, the fruit to go to Blackbeard. That's, okay. that's it. I think I feel it's a cop out to pull out like a Sengoku. Maybe Bellamy. Bellamy would be an interesting one. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, Buggy, Marco, <laughs> and Kid. How would that progress how the story? Is, how is Eddie? Even... It makes it better for me. <laughs> but actually, I do think that Law dying would progress the story a lot, though I don't want him to die, and that's my nightmare. I think that he would probably be, like, top contender for that because I think he'll, he's going to perform the in- eternal life yeah. on Luffy. Fair. That's Ew. fair. That's actually fair. That's oh, Ew. Luffy with eternal <laughs> life? What are we reading? Okay, maybe it's not Luffy. He already maybe it's Beppo. I think he's going to save Beppo. his he life. Already, he already has a god fruit. She's, now he can't okay. die? She but, said, Ew. <laughs> He's going to save his life. I'm calling it. Goodbye. You know what's crazy? Because Beppo could be the person, but the reason why is because I, um, the person with the burn scar, I was thinking it could be Panda Man. Because Panda Man was introduced and Oda keeps bringing him back and he has flame marks on his legs. Oh and I was like, no God. shot. That's crazy. And then, he, but he's a character who's shown up in Nolan's backstory. So 400 years ago. Mm-hmm. So it could be that Panda Man has the eternal youth surgery J- done on JT, him. Who, who's your three go to, to, to kill off? So, so I'm actually gonna basically agree with Seb. You know, I want to see Black or yeah, I want to see Blackbeard kill off Shanks and Garp, cause y'all, you know, Larry's been saying it forever. We need that beef between Luffy and Blackbeard sizzling. I mean, That's me. I know he captured Ace, whatever, but that beef's not sizzling right now. Like he don't hate Blackbeard like that right now. And the third character that I need to die as soon as possible, Usopp. You know, <laughs> if y'all see me in the Discord, I hate Usopp. I can't stand Usopp. Uh, worst time skip I've ever seen in all of uh, manga history. <laughs> and yeah, he could be a brave warrior of the sea by sacrificing himself for his crew and taking taking an L. I actually agree with that. Not not with the whole the slander, but the the last part. He got where it needed to go. Yeah. He's very underappreciated and he's overhated. <laughs> Damn man, you're you not... said Usopp's o- you said Usopp's overhated. Very much so. Overhated, under. Oh yeah, no, I love Usopp. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is a switch? Yo, is this what yeah, we're trying hey, to do? Hey, hey, listen, 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 JT, man. bro, stand on yours, you bro. Show, man. Stand on yours. Where's okay? that Cocker's hockey, listen, bro? bro I'm glad we agree. Lost top one, bro. Lost top one. What's that talking about? Bro? He said lost top, top one. one bro. <laughs> and you said I'm oh, glazing. JT should change his name to glazing. What the hell? Oh my god. Oh my god. JT, we appreciate the call. Yeah, man. bro, before you get weird. <laughs> Bye. Bro, yeah. <laughs>
Yo, G, say bye, back, bro. You gotta say bye back. Yeah. <laughs> I think he hung up. Did he hung up? Did he hang up? Wait, wait, wait. What'd you say? Sorry. Bro, hang up. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, bro, hang up on you, bro. Get more. Get more. Be right, bro. <laughs> Alright, alright, bro. I'm gonna see y'all. I'm gonna see y'all. Alright, love you too, man. Peace. Oh, oh my, my god. god, bro. Yeah, you could probably turn that down a little bit too, since he, like, because it's gonna be loud as hell next call. Oh, man. JT too funny, bro. <laughs> hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Uh, I'm Marcus. I'm alright. I'm alright. Hey, what's up, Marcus? Thanks for calling in, brother. Hey, no problem, man. I, I just had a question about uh, what do you think, like, do you think Shiryu may know where Rox is since he was, like, the head of Impel Dale? Ooh. Actually, a good question. I and you know how, uh, like, they, the, the Impel Dale may have, like, people who have hockey there. So I was just thinking they might be able to hold Garp down there uh, if they catch him. Hmm. So I think I I just would much rather Rox isn't alive, um, that he's just been hidden away somewhere for all this time. Same. But I could see Oda going that route. I would say no. You know what I'm saying? I'd say no because Shiryu didn't know about the red Pony glyphs, if the government had it or not. Mm -hmm. So but it just shows that there's a disconnection between Impel's Down's information and what they receive compared to what the actual government knows. But at the same time, like we could say the admirals don't know about it because Kuzan doesn't even, like, I would, I think I would know if I saw a red block there. Now he could be lying there, but at the minimum, I like what Marcus said about Shiryu. Cause I, again, that was my favorite part where he just put like logic into the series of like, this is how the world government should stop people from getting to the one piece. I would love it if Shiryu was that like voice of information about how the world government works, what they do, more insight on Impel Down. Like we don't know how that was made and that could be really helpful. Shiryu could be that knowledge bomb that Blackbeard needs mm -hmm. or has been using actually um, this entire time. And especially if he has like the uh, knowledge about all the prisoners or who is, is scheduled to come to Impel Down. That could have been how Blackbeard chose the fruits or found the fruits. Like, there's so much knowledge that Shiryu could have just based off that. So, if, you know, whether it's the uh, Rox is still alive and he's at Impel Down, I'm not sure about that. But he <laughs> might have insider information about Rox, which is something that um, when Garp, um, I forget what chapter it was, but I think it was Momu Usagi, uh, one of the uh, Admiral candidates, was mentioning Rox to Garp. It was Hina or her. And so that like implies other people do know about Rock's uh, God Valley and Rock's event is just lost in time. So Shiryu could know about the outcome of of Impel um of God Valley, and and that could have gave Blackbeard a lot more insight. For one thing, we don't know why Blackbeard cares so much about uh Full of Lit Island. Like you would imagine, like it's just an island, but he seems like like yo, you can't set fires, you can't like destroy certain parts, but you have an island man who could just like remake stuff. Like he seems like personally attached to it and it might be some insider knowledge that Shiryu provided. I wouldn't be surprised. Um what about you, Gia? What do you think? I just always thought like in my head, I just think rocks to be dead. And I, I kinda wanna keep it that way. Not 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 for any like reason in particular. It's just like that's been done and over with. Yeah. And I just think he's not alive. Yeah. Do you think it would ruin his character if he's alive? I think it would just be a little too much. You know, like, we, we introduce so many characters all the time. It's like bringing back characters that already had their time. It's just too much, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Do you think it would overtake uh, Blackbeard's spot as, like, the like the antagonist of the series if Rox came back? Pro yeah, probably. I can see that happening. It would be too many people, too many antagonists all at once. I think, I think we're at, we have a solid, like, group right now. Yeah. We don't need to. Uh, what about you, Marcus? What do you think, bro? Um, I just wanted to ask a question. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, I, I usually like to give the uh, the caller their, you know, their opinion, too, I know. I like um, your question. Yeah, the good. question was yeah, good, was, though. I'm thinking. And uh, I was also thinking about, like, what if uh, Blackbeard captured Garth? And uh, they had an execution like how they did uh, Rogers. So I wanted to see what uh, like the what, what would the Marines think about that? Would they even let their uh, champion die or like you know? Hmm. A public execution of the hero of the Marines held oh. by Blackbeard. 
I didn't. Think I about love it. it. I didn't. Think I don't think Garp would let it happen though. Like it would have to be a situation where it's like, we'll let Kobe and them go if you do this. But even Garp wouldn't accept that. He would just try to fight his way out. I don't think so like Kuzan would be on board with that either. Like the, that might be, be that might break the camel's back, so the, to say. Right? The thing about it is like Roger was trying to get executed to start yeah. the new the Great Pirate era. I don't see a, a situation yeah, to create the one piece. Yeah, I don't see a situation where Garp is doing that to create the new Marine era. Like I mean, if we if they could have that result and Garp, be Garp's intention, and maybe he's inspired by Roger to do it, maybe I just don't know how we get there. You know what I mean? I don't know how we organically get to that space. But yeah. he is talking about the future of the Marines already. So maybe. I, I like that, though. I like it. I just don't know how we get there. I don't see them, like Blackbeard and everyone, I don't see them ever saying, oh, wow, we're going to have a public execution. <laughs> I, I don't see that. Inviting like, like, problems Let's to go, them? guys. Let's, yeah. Yeah. let's hold him for longer and publicly execute him. That's not going to happen, I don't think. That's fair. In my opinion. I think the sentiment behind it is cool, but like yeah. you said, it just... But, Functionally, wouldn't like. I, lo- mm-hmm. I love that. Blackbird. He's just not. He not. He not that guy. He not Doflamingo. Well, well, the thing is, he's not Doflamingo. But Blackbeard tries to find an advantage in anything. Mm-hmm. And if he exterminated mm-hmm. Garb, there's no advantage for him to reap any rewards. Yeah, like if trading anything, him in would if, get him something. If anything, it would create too much attention onto him, where he would be able. He would be. He's trying to make his own country affiliated with the world government. Yeah. That's the worst way to do that, right? Like, he's never going to put himself in that position. I mean, being a Yonko is kind of a bad position to start. But, like, I think what you asked... But he doesn't even see himself as a Yonko at this point. Like, he's literally like, yo, I'd rather go under the world government banner and be my own country. I think what you said, though, actually... Like, people in the chat might go home and think about this, where it's like, you know, could... Blackbeard stand to gain anything from publicly executing Garp Nothing. because if all the resources are come to him and then he uses that as diversion to go somewhere else, like yeah, that could be that he's done that before, right? Like I would honestly, so, that kind of made me think about it a see, little now bit more. My head is rambling. I I can see a situation where he like convinces Buggy to try to do it, and like then he would use the distraction that Buggy's doing it to do something. Yo, else. Buggy would be too scared Buggy, of Garp, bro. <laughs> like I just, again, I just don't know. If, a situation where Garp's allowing himself to get executed like that. Buggy would yeah. look at Garp and be like, nah, bro, I ain't touching that. Yeah. But, yo, Marcus, thank you for the excellent questions, man. Hey, hey it was a pleasure being on, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're honored. I hope you have a great night. Y'all too. Thank you, man. Peace. Thank you. See you. Damn, they be having some fire stuff sometimes. Mm. Yo, Sebastian put a good poll in here. He said, the Garp public execution sparks the great marine era. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Hey, guys, it's Broker. Hey, <laughs> broker, broker got there. What's up, Broker? I hope it's not too late, bro. It's not. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just glad I'm not the last person calling like <laughs> the last two times. <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, right, so, I, again, I was going to do Murayuma theory, but I think because I'm just so sick of people hyping Blackbeard so much, I might just have to talk about... <laughs> like the Blackbeard Pirates and uh, the fight against Kuzan. Okay. So, wh- what would you rather? What's your, what's your poison? Uh, <laughs> Why are you calling both poison? <laughs> <laughs> Go whichever one you feel like is going to be a banger. Right, okay, okay. I- I'll-, I'll do the Blackbeard Kuzan one. So, I'm of the belief that I think that Kuzan is deep cover and that he's trying to keep things in it, play both sides for as long as he can as to not expose himself. But I think anyone that thinks that Kuzan could lose to Garp is just mad. There's, there's no way. So I think that the only way it can really play out is that eventually after Kuzan gets, you know, his ass beaten up, everybody joins in and they all gang up on Garp. So all of the Blackbeard pirates that are still there, they all gang up on him. And as he slowly, like, whittled down... That's when Kuzan jumps in, freezes him solid because he's used up loads of his haki and he's just, you know, sort of like getting tired. But that's the point where he hesitates. And that's when Burgess, I think, because he's the one that seems to have distrusted Aokiji the longest. Um, he's like, look, either you do it or we tell Teach or we all take you on. You're tired as well. Now we could all gang up on you. And that's when you see Kuzan break. Um, the ice, so the ice that's got um, Garp in shatters everywhere, but that it's not actually Garp, 
and that Kuzan has used is we've seen him make sort of like, you know, delicate, more intricate things out of his ice. And he's made an exact copy of Garp's body in the ice. So Garp's safe somewhere, whether it's underground or wherever. But um, Garp's safe and the, the shatter that we see is actually just a, a fake version of Garp. And that's how the story progresses. We get, like you say, more heat on Blackbeard with Luffy and stuff, and Luffy obviously holding it against the Blackbeard pirates as a whole. But yeah, I think that's the only way it can possibly go. I don't think there's any chance that um, Garp's going to lose to Kuzan. No way. I mean, yeah, is that yeah. Yeah, under the parameters that you put, like I don't think Garp loses to Aokiji one on one, but you know, the Blackbeard pirates. He's the 10th Titanic captain. It ain't going to be no ones. It's going to be a jumping. Um, now, Garp actually does have some backup here. I don't know if Bogart is here. I don't know if... But, like, Kobe's here. There's other sword members here. I don't know how much of a factor they would be. But I can see it playing out the way you say. Um, I just... You're saying that they, they would force Kuzan to kill Garp under the pretense, like, hey, if you don't, we're going to tell Blackbeard on you. And then Kuzan would be faking it. That that's the element of it that I don't like personally because we've yeah, already it's, gotten the the it's big. More the fact that, mm. Sorry, it's more the fact that unless we all really think that Kuzan has completely betrayed the Marines and he's with Blackbeard, and like I said, if he was going to lead the Marines, yeah, fine, I can see that. But maybe then joining up with like the Revolutionary Army or something, not like mm-hmm. you know the most evil sort of pirate we really know so far in Blackbeard. Yeah, I'm with you on that part. It's just the the, the fake out um, offing of Garp is that I'm not, what I'm not liking. Because we already got the big like Saul isn't gone oh, I reveal. See what you mean. I just um, I don't I, know I, if I we can do I that again. Yeah, yeah. So, I think like you say with the fact that you know Garp has backup. You're absolutely right. But I think they're gonna have to try and escape, whether that be under Garp's orders of him saying, look, you guys run, I'll hold them off, that mm-hmm. sort of thing, because we already know they don't want to let Kobe go, you know, he's escaping, mm-hmm. so whether he's going to hold them off long enough for them to be able to get away, whether, again, like, he throws the ship, but obviously with this time him not being on it as such. Do you have anything, because I have, I have a few responses to the thing it's for me like the deep cover uh, i don't know if you were in parts like you got anything to say let me speak though <laughs> <laughs> my bad wait, wait did, i didn't see i was looking this way i didn't see it you... i just talked i'm good no right. you asked you us asked and them. then you just started going off yeah you didn't well uh, <laughs> she is looking at you like you know what and then you're like oh my bad my bad i didn't <laughs> see no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. yeah go ahead par you're fine. it was just because <laughs> earlier we talked we talked about this a lot because uh talked. Uh, Larry was pushing back on on the thing, and we had to elaborate a lot. But like chapter six ninety nine, I think paints a, a picture of Kusan where it's it's not necessarily he has to be evil to be with the Blackbeard pirates. I think like you don't have to be like that's the assumption that Blackbeard said like oh I think you got pirates wrong. Like we just have like a common goal, and we don't know what that common goal is. Oda off screen that. So um, whereas like you know the deep cover thing, I see a route for that. The only reason why I lean the other direction is because in order currently to make it make sense, you have to jump. You have to jump through a lot of uh, like mental loopholes to make it work. And I'm a guy who likes doing that a lot. But in this particular one, it's like you have to go backwards and forwards to do that to make this uh, make full sense for the deep cover to make. And I'm not saying Oda's not capable of doing that as a writer. And also with like spies, we had Stussy be like a double, triple, quadruple agent. I'm not. I, I'm not saying it's not possible. Um, the one thing that I, I would say is like. Uh, one contingency on that theory, I think, would be like Garp would have to get the understanding because Garp is a blockhead that like, yo, my my people are safe, and then I listen to you, right? Like if Kuzan, like a in like a whisper situation with Kuma and Rayleigh, for example, at Sabori, Kuma like whispered to Rayleigh like, yo, I'm a rev, like just let me do what I'm gonna do, and then Rayleigh's like, all right. You know, and then so like it could be something like that where Kuzan uh, is like, yo, Garb, just let me do what I'm going to do. Your crew will be safe or your people will be safe. And then, you know, the the cop, the, not the cop, but the decoy thing that you said could make sense. There's a lot of ways it can go if that's the route. Right. Hmm. That's the that's the benefit of the deep cover thing. The only re- reason why currently it's hard to reach for that is because there's so many options for how you can masquerade this situation, especially with like Kuzan's powers, like you said. So I do like the idea, though. I do like the idea. 
Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. I no, it was a good question, Broker. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Um, yeah, so the, the only sort of response I would say to that then is I, I think we, could all, we all agree here that Kuzan by far is the second strongest out of all the Blackbeard pirates. Yes. Right? Might be the first. Yeah. Might. But, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I would even, no, I'd go that far. I'd say that at the moment he beats current power Blackbeard easily. But I, think I can agree to that. That's kind of the reason that. Uh, I, I think that's kind of the reason that he's. Like, we, we can sort of like see. We can do the sort of like, you know, mental gymnastics we need to go, oh, this Blackbeard pirate will go against this straw hat all the way through. You know, we can make guesses when it comes to obviously not the top three, but. I, I can't see anyone that could be going up against Kuzan. Not really. Uh, yes, they'll all get way stronger by then, but maybe you could say Jinbei, maybe. But I, I, I think it's just at the moment there's just there's just no way. Listen to me, broker. Uh oh. If Aokiji went to Winter Island and fought Law and his crew, he beats him by himself without any help. And he oh, doesn't absolutely. take, and he doesn't take as much damage as Blackbeard did. No, I agree. And that's just it. Especially as it's a fight in, especially as it's a fight in the water. Yep. Oh, so it's over. Oh, that yeah. boat's swimming away. That's a, yeah. that's a matchup piece, but <laughs> I agree. Age. Oh, yeah, that's it, crazy. It, it, it's not even close either. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm agree. I agree with you all the way. Like I say, I just I don't see how a fight against. Garp and Kuzan can sort of like be and, and you, you can't even really take it seriously because if Garp wanted to he could probably end it way sooner than he has maybe his emotions towards Kuzan is what's stopping him and holding him back yeah but yeah thank you uh, Broker for the call man appreciate you as always you know that always always yeah take care man have a good night oh and get uh, it, actually what time is it right now by you good morning uh, for me, it's 10 to 1 in the morning. Huh. Oh, that's not too bad. Get some sleep. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a good night. All right. Take care. All right. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Stop the broker, bro. I thought it was more like the white beard situation, to be honest. What was? The whole garb situation. Oh, <laughs> Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Hey there. Uh, I'm Joe. I'm doing good. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you for calling. Hey, uh, yeah, first time caller. I uh, just wanted to say really quick, I'm a big fan. Ah, uh, thank you, man. I'm uh, super honored for you to be a fan. Uh, I had a quick little theory I wanted to run by you guys. Yeah, shoot your shot. So, in the story we see, Luffy is basically like, he brings everyone together, right? And we see him working with, you know, Crocodile and other villains end up teaming up with Luffy as mm -hmm. the story progresses. So, um, what I'm wondering is if you guys think by the end of it, would we see maybe Luffy and Blackbeard team up against Eam as a final villain? Or who do you think Luffy could team up with that we haven't seen him team up with yet? Mm. You want to answer this one, Chief? I don't think he would ever team up with Blackbeard. Just because Blackbeard, first of all, is the reason why his brother's dead, basically. And second, Blackbeard's just way too terrible of a person. I don't think Luffy would ever stoop so low to rely on his strength, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I'm just one of those guys that just doesn't believe Emu... Uh, individually is a strength oriented person i think it's more government uh, based where he can summon a huge force uh and then use admirals to his will um so if he does that would blackbeard and luffy maybe need to team up together in order to defeat him i i think right now for me i think blackbeard is the main antagonist he stays the main antagonist He'll reach the limits he needs to reach in order to challenge Luffy for the Pirate King position. And the world government will be kind of like a, I don't want to disrespect the world government by saying like they're a sideshow, but they're not the main course right now, in my opinion. 
Mm -hmm. They're like the appetizer before the, the Pirate King uh, status gets settled. I have a slightly different view of it, but I, okay, so prefacing, this is actually a poll that I did in my community, and my, my community came at me on the Discord for it, but I, the, the question I asked, and this is like probably the only part of support that makes me kind of see it, and other than that, I don't like this purview at all because of what Gia said, like Blackbeard's kind of, not every villain needs to be remediated, but the problem is, is like Luffy's character is that kind of a character that even no matter how much of a villain you are, he can somehow turn you around. And it's not like the Naruto uh, thing, it's it's slightly different. Um, and that's where it's kind of confusing because if Blackbeard and Luffy have the same dream and they're just going about it different, then maybe Blackbeard does do something in that, it, it, at least helpful towards Luffy by the end of it. And the reason why I see it is because we have to ask ourselves how Joy Boy failed. Why did Nika fail? If if the original Joy Boy failed and the Void Century happened, that implies that something, they missed something. And it maybe it's uh, they couldn't bring their era's Blackbeard on their side. And maybe their era Blackbeard is who Emu is now. And there's so many iterations of how that could go. Um, as, as I do see Emu as more of a strength, uh, like not strength, but like this kind of like godly power that's just like ridiculous that you would need a team up to, to take over. The reason being is because one, they beat the original Joy Boy somehow. We don't know the context, but at the moment they won, right? They had the Void Century. And on top of that, they had 800 years of precedent over the current timeline. So like they had also 800 years, whereas Luffy has such little time. The only way you can surmount that is by grouping together which is what we see uh progressing through the story right like as luffy progresses yeah he gets stronger but he also gets like synergy with other people other people help him his crew is also getting stronger people around him are getting stronger um i think that's the entire point of his power that mihawk pointed out the most formidable power that mihawk stated was the power to uh, create allies uh, regardless of you know what background where they're from and so I, I definitely see that playing in i just personally don't want blackbeard to for that to happen but the only reason why i see it is because the joy boy thing why did joy boy fail and if it's because they couldn't properly get black their era's blackbeard or some iteration of that to to, to help them that could all explain how the void century came out and and then it would be kind of cool if if it were that route that the current emu is the past blackbeard you know what i mean like there's there's a way that circles around narratively um but again it's still open ended uh wh like what larry said if the world government is um like a means to the pirate king thing that changes everything i see the world government as the thing that gets flipped upside down after the uh, the laugh tale mm -hmm. stuff so <clears throat> yeah, that, that's kind of how I see it. I, I would say no. I don't think Luffy and Blackbeard ever team up. But as far as other potential team ups, I do think a Katakuri team up could happen. Um, I think. Katakuri's I want to say Doflamingo, but I just think that would be rehashing. Cross Guild, baby. I just think that's a. It's like rehashing what happened with Crocodile too much. Um, I don't see the revolutionaries as an antagonist, but a team up with his dad could happen. Um, but yeah, I just don't. I. Again, I'm a huge proponent of, like, I want the Luffy and Blackbeards to be beef for life. To be, <laughs> like, like I would never forgive that dude kind of thing. And I don't even think we're at that space with it yet. But I think we get there before that they actually clash. So I, I'm i going to say no. But what about you? Do you think they could team up for real? Um, I guess it depends on, like, who the final villain is. If it is the world government slash scheme or if it is Blackbeard. Because, I mean, I don't think they would team up, but something crazy could happen as to where, you know, Blackbeard gets lost through and then realizes the only way for the world to be better is if Luffy wins so he could give Luffy the immortal surgery. I don't know. I don't think that would happen, but Oda's crazy, so we don't know. <laughs> that would be a very stark well, shift in came up with character direction. King or something like that. Mm -hmm. Even Kaido or Big Mom, you know, all the pirates versus the world government, something like that. Yeah. Well, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate the question, too. It was a really good one. That was interesting. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. No, anytime, man. Talk to you later. Later. Uh, one more last call, and then we're done. Got a lot of calls. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get more. <laughs> Super chats go crazy. We still got some. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you, and how are you? 
Hey, man. Remember you had a Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> right, man, my name is Bob. Um, I just want to say I'm a huge fan. Love you guys. Oh, thank uh, you. I haven't watched that many, uh, I guess, videos of you guys, but um, I mean, you guys are really growing on me. And throughout all my work, like when I work from home, I literally just listen to like you guys' channel, like run through like a playlist or something. So, a uh, huge fan. Um, but I just, I guess I have like a quick question. What's one like controversial take that each of you had that you guys would just take to the grave, no matter how much, like no matter how much people tell you like you're wrong or like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like what's one controversial take that you'll just take to the grave, I guess. Just keep it simple. Yo, I got a lot. I don't no, know. Just, I, you know what it is? I, like I, I used to, but they got right proven right or, or wrong. Or I don't right. want to Damn, you didn't need to flex that hard, bro. <laughs> no, I said I'm wrong. Listen, it's like, it's like, You've been listening, right? So, like, what I say may be controversial, but, like, I'll be speaking facts, dog. <laughs> so, like, I don't have anything controversial. Uh -huh. people, uh -huh. just don't, people just don't listen. Yeah. Nothing in your heart of hearts that you know is probably, like, not that possible that you just want to see happen. Nah. I got one, but... My most controversial thing, I don't even know if it's really a take, it's just my hatred for Doflamingo. <laughs> like, I, I just hate him. I hate everything about him. I think he shouldn't exist. Like I think he's a great villain, but I just despise that man. So that means he's a good, really good villain. Really That's good. Serious. Yeah. Despise. Uh, I'd say mine is probably Sanji getting Conqueror's Hockey at some point. But I don't even cape for it as hard as I used to. So. Oh, I have one. But I, I don't I don't think I actually oh no just um, I I think that Sanji and Zoro are equal. Oh, in, oh, in strength. Oh, sorry, oh. sorry. That's why my parallel makes so much more sense. The oh, one. Man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> sorry. Nah, I like. Not that. sorry. Party, you gotta get one in real quick. Uh, yeah, I gotta yeah. be quick. I mean, the one I've said this a few times. Um, people have been recently, especially. Elemental hockey. I think like at the end of the day, whether Oda explains it verbatim or not. Um, the, the connections are too, like, the, the cipher's there. Like, if you go on channel, it's like, the, there's literally, like, a book that Oda just follows. And so, like, whether Oda decides to put it in the story verbatim, I think it's there. Like, it's just, at this point, there's too much evidence for it. Like, the word play, the, the, the exact thing that Sanji uh, went through during Fishman Island is, like, word for word, like, paragraph uh, from, from this book. Yeah. And so, the elemental hockey thing for me, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I feel like that's your best theory because it's like the most true. Like, oh, no, like no. you landed 100% on that, Bad. in my opinion. Bad. But uh, uh, listen, man, thank you so much <laughs> yeah. uh, for the call. Seriously, I appreciate you being uh, a fan and also listening to us. Like anytime anybody ever says they're, they're huge fans and they do such extreme lengths of, you know. I want to see you guys go so far. Like you guys are like you guys have it. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you this. Me too. Me too. I'm with you there. I'm yeah. with you there. We're going to be the best, man. Yeah. Just give me some time. You guys, you guys enjoy the night. I don't want to take anyone else's up time. You know, let other calls call in before you guys head out. But uh, yeah, yeah. have a good night, guys. Uh, the stream is awesome. All right. Thank you. You too, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And then you yeah. can end calls now. Uh, but overall, listen, guys, uh, I'm so sorry I have to do this, but we just don't have enough time for the Super Chats. Uh, with time constriction... Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to hit every single one. Uh, there's too many questions. There's too many things that going on in an episode for like three hours, you know, like typically stuff like this takes like four to five. That's why other One Piece content creators or just other content creators have enough time to get through every single one. And we just don't. And um, I don't want to seem ungrateful because if you've been here long enough, you know that I love chat. I love everybody that supports our, you know, us overall and for me to not be able to read the super chat kind of bothers me a lot. So I will say this. Thank you for everything you guys have done. Uh, thank you so much for just even tuning in and liking the stream. And believe me, you don't have to do any super chats. You, you just watching is enough for us. So thank you. But before we go, uh, I just want to say, Par and Gia, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. It was truly a pleasure and an honor of ours. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to say? To anybody to find you anywhere because uh listen guys all their links are in the video description below that i could find so gia 
Talk to the world. Well, thank you for having me. It was so much fun. And I'm glad we finally got to do this because we've been talking about this for a little while. Um, like you said, they're all down below if you want to find me anywhere. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Oh, thank you. And then Par, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of you guys uh, already know me. And, and then maybe if it was an introduction, I hit you with some crazy uh, <laughs> ideas, which you could probably see reflected on Gia's face when I said Zora's name. Like, <laughs> wow, right? Um, but what I will say is like, uh, yo, like, thank you guys for supporting that One Piece talk. Like, I, they're one of the reasons why my channel is so much fun for me because they got me out of my space and like helped me connect to the story and be more uh, passionate about it, right? Like that's one thing that I loved about them when I first met them was that it, it was like they're all brothers. Like you could kind of see that through the like their conversations and you know the the respect that the community has and and is created by that is so amazing, and so. The one thing that I, I would say is uh, if you guys want to see me, go to check out uh, on Wednesdays, Blair, uh, Sebastian's DDT. I'm hopping in all the time. That's where the community, if you guys wanted to call in and share your thoughts, it's a great place to do it. And Larry's having a bunch of other streams, Apex tournaments. Like, that's the kind of thing that I love to see. So thank you guys for supporting them so, so much. And uh, you'll see me here more often uh, in, in the future. And and. Hopefully we can see a lot more guests like Gia. Amazing mm -hmm. time. Thank you. Thank you for coming on this episode. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, and before we go, the last thing I have to say, I completely forgot. This Friday at 7 p.m., I will be interviewing OP scans and TCB scans at the same time. Hey. And um, that's for the community. That's not for me, uh, really. This is going to be super big because these are both of the, the translation groups that translate Black Clover, uh, you know, One Piece, JJK. Uh, JJK, Dragon Ball, Super, and they do everything. So I'm having literally these teams come together to, uh, I'm hoping, create something even better for the community moving forward. So they could probably work together or they can figure out how to do things better for us. So check that out, man. It's going to be great. But other than that, my name is Larry. Seb. Our vision. Gia. And this is that One Piece talk. Jana. <laughs> <laughs>